call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything else you want to change, add? Um, uh, correction. The, it is not Tuesday, it is Monday the 20th. Perfect. Can we also add back in? We the other, a couple of meetings ago we briefly glossed over the December meeting dates, but I wanted to revisit those. Okay, December yeah. meeting. Yeah. Want to just do that under any other business? Sure. First one. Anything further? Just to let you all know that Mo won't be here. He had his hip revision surgery. He's doing great. He's both home today. But he just he couldn't sit that long for him, you know, too soon to be sitting. But he did go to the packet and called with some input. He called me today, so. Okay. He's doing good. All right. Move to accept as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. And public comment inquiry. Is there anything that's not on the agenda this evening that anybody would like to bring up? I don't see anybody from the public here other than our agenda <laughs> items. So I'm going to assume that there is none. Lisa, do you have anything? I'm sorry. Do you have anything? Public comment inquiry? <laughs> You're the only one Damn. who's counting on you. I don't know. We got a late arrival. I'll try to do better than him. Yeah. Oh, he's on the Rick, did you have anything? Uh, we're in uh, public comment inquiries. Is there anything on, that's not on the agenda tonight that you'd like to speak to? Or? Nope. Okay. Doug, do you have anything? No. I'm good. Okay. We'll move on. We have first appointment uh, this evening is Aldrich and Elliot to go over uh, signing of the construction loan documents and engineering services. So Jason is here uh, this evening representing. Aldrich and Elliot. So um, there's two documents for review. I believe everybody has documents in their packet. The first one is the construction loan application. Mm -hmm. So this is the third and final phase of the, of the water project that's been going on for a period of time now. Um, and with each phase, there's a there's an additional construction or an additional loan application. This third and final loan application rolls everything into one application so you can proceed with the next phase of construction. Uh, <coughs> the uh, total amount requested is 2.8 million, which matches your bond authorization for the project. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, the application itself. <coughs> um, it does require signature approval and signature by the board, uh, and then it would require uh, town clerk signature as well as town signature. Oh, no, that's pretty much it. You've seen pretty much all the numbers that are on there before. So. Similar application to the ones prior. Okay. Anybody from the board have any questions in regards to the loan application? Teresa, do you have anything? Or, no. or Tim, any questions in regards to the no, loan app? No, pretty good. A lot of what we see on here is blank. Like areas that are not filled in and whatnot. Is that going to be filled in at some point? Or? Uh, I'm not sure what you. What you we got what was that? that my going yeah, a lot of there's some questions on there. Like you know, has the town ever experienced wire fraud or have, have they experienced wire fraud in the past two years? Hopefully those are those blank. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so six, it's pretty six, much more than the same. It's like seven or eight pages of blank. Yeah, stuff that, that may just be some supplemental information that the town. Typically provides it, it's a lot of them, a lot of those are just questions about um, 
who signs the checks. Yeah, that. what are what are some of the town's financial controls and, and Yeah, well that that's not right, it's not that really stuff really. Oh, so yeah. I'm assuming you're gonna ask about. someone for the information or something. Yeah, yeah, that's just typically information that the yeah. town provides about their own internal procedures. All right. Um, I'll, what, I'll what's, what is the applicant's fiscal year? Yeah, I saw some blanks. Yeah, I wasn't sure what the deal was. This I just, is not our first application, uh, so I didn't know if you were transferring stuff from one to the other, but I can fill so, it in tomorrow. So typically, mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. if you changed fiscal year, we don't fill in those final pages. Okay. Because we don't always have that information. Okay. And it changes from fis one fiscal year to the next, depending okay. on what your budget is and budget cycle. Okay. So we typically don't fill, fill in from page three on. Okay. That's something that the Okay, that wasn't, all right, okay. no one asked, so we can do that. So that's fine. Once yeah. we sign, I can go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Free and yeah. yeah, I just. Um, okay. I can do it tomorrow. Okay. I'll complete it and send it. Any other questions or concerns? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion. Uh, motion to sign and authorize the construction loan application and engineering service <coughs> agreements. Well, those engineering no, is separate. Separate. Oh, separate. separate. Oh, or just do the construction loan application. Right. Yep. All right. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who did the motion? Um, I think if you just sign one, it all yep. gets submitted to the state electronically. Okay. Oh, okay. there you go. I think it's just the certification on the back. It's just a one shot deal. Yeah, and then each. each yep, there's room. Number. All right, so if you can just date it and then pass it around. I'll get Pam to sign it tomorrow. And then who do I scan? Send it to send it back to us. Okay. Send it to Mike or to you, Jason? Both, please. Jason, what's your last name? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> I'm sorry, and your first name? Jason. Jason Booth? Yes. Okay. I'll get Pam to sign it tomorrow with the town clerk. Okay. So the next piece is the uh, is an amendment to the engineering services agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, and this so this amendment uh, is for the step three construction phase services. Uh, so from this point on, uh, I'll be involved with the construction aspect, uh, managing construction. I'll be here on site for meetings, so on and so forth. Mike will also be involved. Uh, in carrying things through construction. Um, we're estimating 180 to 80 calendar days for construction for this work at this point. Um, and so the step three services include uh, bidding, the bidding, bidding the project, uh, uh, construction admin services, which are project meetings, uh, compliance review, uh, uh, payroll, I'm uh, sorry, um, uh, requisitions for payment for the contractor, Review of shop runs, those types of items. Uh, we also have a resident representative, so we'll have a person from our office that's on site full time working with the contractor uh, every day that the contractor's on site actively doing work. 
that person will be here resolving issues, uh, working closely with Tim, um, and, and interacting with our office. It's also sort of a liaison between the public uh, and, and, uh, and contractors and town at the same time. Uh, there's also a, a post-construction phase, which is sort of termed incorrectly. Uh, part of this post-construction phase is uh, reviewing AIS certifications because of the way this funding is structured. Uh, it is it, they're part of these procurement procedures are include American Iron and Steel provisions, um, <coughs> Davis Bacon, and, which are certified payrolls. So we have to check the contractor certified payrolls on a weekly basis and all subcontractors. Uh, and disadvantaged business enterprises, which is a solicitation of uh, women owned minority businesses uh, for bidding on the project. So all of that work is rolled into here. Um, the, the amendment for this contract is $247,000, and that's all part of what was included in the total project cost. It's part of what's in, in the bond. Probably the two point eight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What was the amount again? Uh, $247,600. Uh, so just a point of note, the state, uh, the water, in different investment division, which used to be facilities engineering division, they have reviewed this. We got responses from them today, and they concurred this with, with this amendment. They reviewed the cost uh, for the project. So there's no changes to the document. There, are, there are no okay, changes. Perfect. No. Thanks. No. Excellent. Questions? Any questions about the services that are included in here? So this, this refers back to the original agreement that was on July, July 10th, 2019, which actually has more detailed information on the specific services that we're now reincorporating into the project. Any so the, the, the gentleman, or the whomever you had on site with yes. you, uh, making sure that we have the right aggregate for backfill and a certain amount of that's correct. To keep pipes from running all over the place. And That's right. So I, I think the only concern I had just looking at was, so based on a 180 calendar day construction period, which is roughly 132 working days, mm -hmm. um, you ha you have it figured in here for 1,095 man hours, so not to exceed that. And if you backtrack that, that's only eight hours a day. So seems kind of light on a construction. Yep. That year. Yep. We so we we feel confident with the number we've got in here um, for the duration, based on the estimates we've done and how we typically price these for for RPR coverage on site. Um, we feel confident in the in, in the number of, of man hours that we've got assigned for somebody to be here full time while the contract is working. Yeah, I mean it, it, the, the 180 days. That's 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 till completion, you know, when, when things need to be done. Um, that doesn't necessarily, aren't necessarily, you know, there, there's going to be some four hour days in there at the beginning and end of the project, you know, that it's, you know, the numbers aren't necessarily supposed to match up perfectly um, there. I, I think we, we included a few rain days in that 180 day estimate. I mean, that there's, you know, the, the, the goal is to give the contractor adequate time. If you want. We can share our level of effort with you so you can take a look at it. No, I just, you know, my concern would be that, <clears throat> you know, that we, that it's not to exceed 132,000 and then, you know, that 132,000 turns into 200,000, you know, in we, engineering costs. Again, we, we feel comfortable with the number and the calendar days uh, to get us there. We certainly, you know, we can't, you know, if there's issues with the contractor, you know, and there's, there's, there are certain delays um, that where the contractor would need an extension via change order. That's something we can't necessarily control. Um, it's not necessarily something we can predict, uh, but we feel pretty confident that we've got enough time in here uh, to adequately staff the project full time while the contractor's here. So this is your man hours for your your people, your representative. Just for the person on site, correct. All right, not the contractor's banner no. or, or <coughs> length of time. Contra yeah, that's right, yep.
Anybody have any further questions on the board? <coughs> I think my only concern is just exceeding the the allow, allowance of money here, because the way this is drafted is that it's not to exceed the numeral number. So I mean, I guess technically you could you could construct this all inside the 180 calendar days and still go over. The limit and pay more money. That, I guess that's the only concern I have. But, but it's not, not to exceed. Right. Is that, is that it's 132,600 not to exceed. Right. That's in bold. Yeah. Right. So once it goes over that, then they'll bill us by the, the hour. Well, that's not how I read not to exceed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I see. I think not I'm, I'm thinking this as not to exceed. Yeah. Like so this proposal is not to exceed that amount. That's correct. That's correct. The 132,600. Right. We, so we, if you end up at if you end up at uh, 2,000 hours instead of your 1,095. Right. We, it's we still we, only going to be 132. We can't. We can't build based on this agreement. We can't build beyond that not to exceed value without prior approval from the select board or the state. Okay. So that, that I guess. All right, I, I had it backwards, I think, how I was looking at it then. Yeah. Right. So you're right. looking at, so I'm looking looking at, at the, on that line item, it's, it's 132,600 not to exceed. So based on this agreement, that's the amount of money for the RPR services on site that we have to, have to work with. And, and we can't build beyond that value without approval from the select board of from the state. All right. Any other questions? No. <coughs> Move to authorize our town manager to sign. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anything further? So we're ready to go. Well, the permit to construct is submitted. We're, we're doing our internal QA review on, on that right now, so that the town should be seeing that pretty soon. Uh, and then at that point, it goes into the state, and the project kind of goes to sleep a little bit while the state's reviewing that. But um, we're 90%. So, so, so do you have, big, have any idea about when we're going to know about these? Funds that were yeah. hopefully yeah. there. So this is a big piece right now. Getting the construction loan application in and getting the permit to construct in are two big pieces of getting your essentially your offer from the, the drinking water division. Um, <coughs> and uh, hopefully they they've been pretty pretty quick about that. We only need to submit the permit to construct application. It doesn't necessarily have to be approved. So hopefully we can get a response from them. Thank you. Uh, and then schedule-wise, um, as far as bidding is concerned, we'll uh, most likely look to get our disadvantaged business enterprise solicitation out sometime in the uh, mid to end of December time frame, uh, and we that'll set us up for for prime bidding time uh, in the probably in the February time. Yep. <clears throat> Tim, do you have anything or? Uh, 
not concerning the water. I just, while Aldrich and Elliot has the floor, I'd like to utilize some of that time to discuss any questions that may have arisen from the proposed storm drains for Avon and Livery Stable. Yes. Well, I had put the pictures in that you had taken and um, put those in the packet. And as I said um, in my notes that I had put in an amount if we were going to approximately 190000 and then did it over five years at 3%, I think maybe we could, you know, borrow from ourselves from the revolving loan plan or something. But um, so since they were here, we had some questions about trenching and where in relation to the water line it had to go and whether we're paving the whole street or not. Tim has some more information about that. We're also talking about, I think there was a little pros and cons, of why should we do it now? We could wait, you know, obviously we realize that the budget's tight and, um, but, so Tim has some more information. My take on it is if we wait and we don't do it, first of all, this time around, we probably won't address it during my employment with the town of Apple, I'm fairly sure on that, because we have things that keep coming up and up and we address them as they do. Um, and this is one of them. Um, the other thing that, since some of the questions have come up that we found out, is there's a five foot separation between the stormwater drains and the uh, drinking water drain uh, ditches. So with that separation, we can utilize the paving allotment for both ditches to essentially, with the narrowness of those two streets, to pave the whole street after completion of the project. I talked to Wayne some about it today. <clears throat> he said they can do the underlayment, the initial coat right inside of each trench, and then they can utilize the finances that are left over for the blacktop and uh, essentially lay it, an overlay over the whole thing. So it does have potential to bring closure to those two projects if we utilize it correctly. So that's that was your question, right, Chris? Well, I don't think my question is, does it need to be done? Because I think no. it does. I, no, you were asking My question will be more budgetary. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, if, right. right. So, so, so right now, those, those projects are to, when we're done on those, that they'll be paved full width. Because that was the other thing. We didn't want to go dig it up five years down the road and, you know, waste mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years of pavement, you know. Right. So, life anyways. So, and, and we agree with what you said. That was a great catch, Chris, because <coughs> if you're just gonna patch both trenches, you're not gonna see more than, what, five or seven years of life out of the blacktop before it starts failing. But if we can put an underlay into both of them and then overcoat the whole street, then we start seeing some value out of this. Plus, if you dig it up both trenches, you pretty much dug the whole road up anyway, because it's only, what, 10 feet? Is it 10 yeah, feet, feet wide, maybe? Feet wide. <laughs> So, so the water line trench is on the inside of Avon Drive, and the, and the storm drain is on the uh, other side, right? The two on separate. On the eastern side, for right. The two both separate ones. ones. Yeah. What's the disruption for the folks that live up up there? Any ideas in terms totally. of timeline? I mean, it won't be much here. different, will it? I mean, you, you're, you're spending the same roughly the same amount of time to, to pave the road full width versus paving six to, a six to eight foot wide strip of the road. You know, there, there is more work just involved in it. Well, I'm thinking more of the, the actual construction of the ditch, yeah, of laying the pipeline. Right. You can't, you won't be able to have two crews up there at the same time, I would assume. It'd have to be done in separate. They'd have to do one and then the other. And then the other, so it just it, it extends out the amount of time that that road's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Work up there. and there, there may be some some interruption during the day with the narrowness of the road, uh, and you know the expectation would be they have a, a sizable excavator uh, on the road, which is going to take up most of that road width. So it's going to be a bit challenging to have one-way traffic without some modification there uh, by the contractor to allow for one-way traffic. Uh, but those are some details that we have to work out with the contractor. Uh, but I would, ex I would say that, that the people that are on those roads should expect delays. Um, and, and those are the kind of things that, that we would work with the contractor to coordinate uh, with notification <coughs> prior to the work happening so that people can prepare for their day. Um, if there are certain stipulations that you as the town want the contractor to, to you know, say, not start until after 9 o'clock or something along those lines in that area, we can kind of work through those details. 
We also going to need to be able to get emergency vehicles up to oh, Avon and you know, things like that, yeah. details like that. Yeah. Have you been up on Avon Drive, so yeah, you know the, the killer yeah. curves? But, but the emergency vehicle piece is a no-brainer. The yeah. contractor, even if they close the road, have to be able to get emergency, emergency mm -hmm. vehicles through. Mm -hmm. And the good news is there's only four houses on each of those streets. Yeah, but there's some young kids like up at the top Avon Drive. There's a young family up there. Who knows? But, you know, halfway up. Yeah. And, and on the right is a couple. Yeah. So when it, what are we figuring for a bid date, roughly? Because we'd have to make um, our decision before then. Sure. Um, we're looking in the February time frame for bid advertisement. And then if we needed to make a modification during the bid, we certainly could issue something via addendum during the bid period. Uh, so it buys you a little bit of a little bit of time, but that's sort of late to include something of that size into the project. The same contractor be doing both uh, in I theory. Put it out as a bid, yeah. In theory, yeah. The, the general contractors for the project would be separate. Okay. Did you have a, a, a num uh, yearly number for what else would affect the budget at $190,000? Yeah, it's in the budget. It's on. Um, yeah, it's it's on a, an added item on the. Uh, Anything further? Okay. Hearing none. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bob? We said, yes, sir. Hello? We said 6 30 and it's 6 30. Yeah. Hey, you thank you. Stand or sit down? You, uh, uh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Bob Haynes. I'm uh, with uh, Rebound Economic Development Corporation, your local RGC in the land of Akronin. Stephen Shaw is with me from Weston and Sampson, our environmental contractor. So we're here to tell you uh, and, and tell the public this is a, this is a public hearing. Uh, we put a notice in uh, Valley News on uh, the 19th um, that we were applying for two um, approvals. One was to enroll in the Vermont State Brella program, which we did, which I can talk about in a minute. And the other is for uh, money to remediate the former Valley Motors property. So we purchased it this afternoon from uh, GW Plastics Incorporated. Um, we have been working with them for a couple of years. Uh, which preceded their purchasing the property themselves. Um, it's got some contamination issues that Steve can explain to you, but related to uh, some asbestos and some PCB contamination in the paint. Um, uh, the EPA has money available to remediate properties like this. that are not available to private owners, which is the reason they asked us to purchase it. Uh, which we were happy to do. And um, we, once the property is uh, successfully remediated and we get a no further action letter from the state of Vermont, we will reconvey the property back to GW Plastics. Um, the plan they have in mind 
um, is to remove the building, um, prepare the surface for parking. Um, it would improve the visibility in that area. It would um, allow GW Plastics to make some improvements to their, their headquarters building, their main facility that's been there for over 60 years, uh, and is quite constrained. Um, you've probably seen their ads on the paper, uh, or in the paper and on the radio and television that they're looking for people. Uh, they, they've done a major expansion in uh, Royalton with that facility that's now 100,000 square feet and it's quite something. Um, they offer terrific jobs to young people as a first opportunity. They work with uh, area high schools and the Randolph Technical Center to introduce uh, young folks to advanced manufacturing uh, with a job shadowing program and uh, get, them, uh, get them enticed. Um, they work pretty successfully with um, uh, people who would like to change careers, you know, in, uh, at a later uh, stage than, than early on. They've got uh, positions for people with college degrees. Um, they're successful in helping their employees who uh, would like to advance and have the uh, interest and capacity uh, to obtain degrees. So they have several folks there who have gone through a uh, subsidized process with, with uh, uh, Vermont Technical College and, and State of Vermont. So we're, as a, as a nonprofit economic development corporation, uh, responsible for helping the 30 towns in our district, um, we are very, very happy to have a company like GW Plastics, and uh, we'll do whatever we can to spend time um, trying to assist them. Um, so uh, Steve is here to describe um, the physical um, process. Um, I'm sure you're, you're all very familiar with the with the property, much more than I, um, but it has a history of over 50 years of being used as a garage. Um, there may have been gasoline sales there in the past, I'm not exactly sure, I don't remember, but um, uh, there has been an extensive investigation by Weston and Sampson for GW Plastics. We've retained them to do a level one study, which is a requirement for the Brella program and uh, for the EPA. And um, if we are successful in getting the grant, we will have an RFP out for engineering services to continue to help us remediate the property. Um, I jumped over the Brella program. Um, it is um, a program that allows uh, what the state refers to as innocent purchasers to buy a piece of property and not be liable for the environmental condition of it. Um, so GW Plastics applied for that. We similarly applied for it, um, which protects us. Uh, the advantage of having a re and we're also going to ask for a regional <coughs> development corporation exemption, um, which is another uh, layer of protection that we will get if we're successful, and we hope we will be, uh, in the deed, which means that um, future owners, and in this case it will be going back to GW Plastics, will be uh, guaranteed in their chain of title that there are no issues whatsoever uh, with regard to the environmental condition of the property. If you've been to Farmway, um, you might um, recognize, if you've been going there for some time and have been there in the last uh, three years, you'll see a large addition on the back of the property. We helped with that property as well. The family was very worried about the um, uh, Craig Trishman had a fertilizer distribution business uh, with the neighboring property. It was, the property was heavily contaminated. Uh, in that case, GMEDC bought that property um, and applied for an EPA permit. It was successful in getting it. We remediated it and then I signed the deed uh, back to the, to the Gallerani family, uh, Mateo family. Um, so the town was happy that an environmental condition was, was cleared up. Um, the tax base improved. Uh, they added a 20,000, 19,000 foot addition on their property. All the storage trailers in the backyard are now gone, where the sales guys and gals would have to go out and see if they could get five or six boxes for you to try on. Uh, they're now in the store in a nice warm place. The neighbors are happy. So we, we, we hope that, um, that the town of Bethel will be supportive of, of our um, effort. Uh, we have a draft application that's been on file, Therese has it. Um, it is a draft, it has been amended since we prepared the narrative. It will be further amended. We've got to get it down. The narrative has a maximum limit of 10 pages and it's 11 now, so we've got to pare it down a little bit. 
but any letters of support we can get from the select board or any of the other local um, social entities, their recreation uh, council, um, uh, you know, any, any folks you think would be supportive, we would appreciate getting a letter of support from. Two Rivers out of Queechee Regional Commission yeah. is also involved in this process. We represent the same 30 towns, our district is, is the same, and um, they're supportive of this and they helped us with our umbrella application. So I could talk a lot longer than you probably want me to tonight, but that, those are the, those are the high points and maybe Steve could. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the environmental side of it. So this is the site, as you know, um, it, a bunch of environmental investigation was, was completed based on the previous uses for auto sales and auto repair and, and auto body shop over the years. And then GW Plastics purchased it uh, and did a hazardous building materials assessment and found that there's asbestos containing material, there's some, uh, in the old days, PCBs were used in floor paints and other paints like that, which is a, uh, in technical terms to call the bulk product waste and it has no authorized continued use. And so those things need to be uh, to be taken care of as part of removing the building or reusing the site. And so uh, the EPA has a lot of money available where you can apply. And what the EPA likes to see when they do, when they fund these cleanups, is they like to see community involvement, community support. And the EPA, when they give money, they look good when they can leverage other money or resources. So they always, in their database, when they track how they did with the grant, when they give money to a town or an entity to do some sort of cleanup, um, they like to do that with communities that they have some sort of support. And that can be um, support in time or effort or just community really wants it to happen. Um, and so part of our purpose in preparing this grant for the EPA is to enlist town support um, to tell people about the project that we're, that we're hoping to do with EPA funds um, and, to, and to write a story that tells the, the story of the town and how remediating this property would be good for the town. And, and we think that it will be. We think we have a, a, good, um, a good story because I think this is a really important piece of, piece of property that can be reused. Um, GOV Plastics doesn't have a lot of room to expand other than this property. And so using EPA funds, we're really hoping that we can get this uh, site immediate. Uh, one of the things that we're focusing on is um, GW's um, offer to have the property serve as overflow parking for events at the school. And um, we have had conversations and we understand that will be well received. We think uh, visually if you, if, you drive, if you drive north and approach the property, if you can look at their facility now, which has an agrarian look to it, you know, it's, it's very compatible compared to the, you know, uh, a typical old um, steel uh, car dealership on the front. If we think it's a little nicer, we think um, access and egress from that um, section will be defined, it'll be safer. Um, there are some cross, there are some places where kids cross and um, people um, with, a, with a dog or, or, uh, or a stroll or other things are a little bit, uh, uh, could, could be improved. So visually we think it'll be safer, better, we hope the neighbors will like it. We think they will, and uh, we hope you folks do. Thank you all. So, a, a question for you. So, so now that well, GW had purchased the pro project, and now and has a, now. So, what happens if you're not successful in getting the grant money to? It, it, it will it will be cleaned up and remediated, and it'll be much easier uh, if we can get the federal money. It's uh, dedicated for situations where uh, there is a public benefit and there's support from the public. So uh, if we're not successful, something will happen, but it'll be more difficult financially, and um, uh, we hope that's not the case. But at this point, if, if, if you don't get the grant money, then it, the property stays with it, it'll be Green Mountain? Up, and it'll be cleaned up while we own it yeah. to, to an acceptable level. We're going to try to get the site closed, which means that no further action is required, and the state is satisfied. Uh, and they work, you know, very. They're very cautious about it, and very careful about it. So they have standards. They have uh, our district. Um, Two Rivers has um, three engineering firms. I think they use for processes like this. They're very uh, high on Weston and Samson's abilities, and, and we are too. 
Um, there is a, also a 20% match that's required, so we're applying for a half a million dollar grant, and there is a requirement that we have another $100,000 available um, as needed, so the, so the project budget is, is potentially $600,000. And that, that $100,000 match will come from GW Plastics. It's we're a nonprofit, and you know, what we have, we can probably share it in the pockets, but. <laughs> and if it is successful, I mean, what type of time frame are you, is this a one or two year turnaround or is it much longer than that or um, shorter? So the grant period is three years, so the EPA gives you your money and you have three years to complete the project. Um, we anticipate that it will be much shorter than that. A lot of the time, we believe, will be taken up by fulfilling EPA's requirements. So we'll have a requirement to make to create a plan that the EPA will review um, in order to move forward with the grant. But And we'll have... You know, we have a required number of public meetings we'll need to have and things like that. Um, so we have three years. Uh, we anticipate that it would be two years or less. But, but that would not be construction time. That would be like creating the plans, getting the bid documents, right. out, putting it out to bid. Most of it is establishing the plan. You know, what, what, what things cost and what the timelines are and are we satisfied mm -hmm. with that. So they don't just write checks willy nilly. It's a national competition. Um, we're in there with, um, with applications from around the country. This region has done well, the state of Vermont has done well, um, so we have high hopes that we will be successful, but there are certainly no guarantees. But the property will ultimately go back to GW Plastics, um, and they have an option um, in our arrangement that they can ask. If they say, gee, this is taking too long, we can't wait any longer, um, they have the right to, to tell me we want to we want deed back. So. We'll sell it back to them immediately. So I paid ten dollars for it this afternoon, and um, for one dollar they can buy it back. <laughs> you asked. You're asking for support. Do we have? Do you have a, uh, a template? Template, template? Yeah, or, or whatever. So I didn't they, bring one. I took it. some notes. I can. Okay. Write I bring one. Right. Yeah. Uh, Teresa and I had you know okay. several conversations about this, so I didn't. Now, come how does all this impact the? property tax on this piece of property. <clears throat> what happens to the assessment of the property during this whole? I think, I think, it, will in, I think it will increase. Like um, now, like you folks own it now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you're a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So does that, how does that impact the we, taxability we of the property? Tax, we aren't asking for any tax concessions. It doesn't, it doesn't impact any of No, and I'm okay. assuming that the listers have seen it or been through it since. Um, well, I'm sure there's been a change probably yeah, since Valley sure. Motors left. Yeah, and um, so nothing right now. Okay. We, if during the construction, it may, depending what's there on April hmm. 1st, if there was during the construction phase, they may, you know, if the listers went through it, they may devalue it for a little while, but he's right, the value is hmm. only going to grow. So hmm. even if it devalues it for a year or two while it's under construction, it will hmm. definitely be worth more. Well, I guess it all depends on what gets built there. I mean, if you go from a building to a parking lot, then you're obviously well, then you're it's going to be devalued. I'm talking about building to expand. I'm not sure that's guaranteed. That I, be a I think what you, you could uh, envision would be a merged site that would allow GW to add to their existing building. Um, they're studying what the options are. Uh, that's the reason they bought it. They don't have any more room to grow on site. And I think the uh, likelihood yeah. that the um, freight receiving, freight shipping um, might be changed. Um, parking for visitors, I, I can tell you, going there to visit is uh, um, sometimes a little bit fee. So it's easy now, you can park next door uh, at Valley Motors. Um, it, it will be improved. And the other thing that we look at is the relationship between that site and the Royalton site that, it, that are so close to each other. Um, they really have a very direct uh, relationship with each other, the people are people are back and forth. So I think the ability of the Bethel site to accommodate more administrative and um, uh, research people will directly benefit um, the other facility in its ability to support more employees. There, there were worldwide. Yeah, worldwide, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The main server is right there. Yeah, Ben Real just came back from Italy, yeah. um, and he was very proud last spring to say that um, you know sometimes businesses get. Um, they get a little tired of people saying, well, gee, you know, you're just another big business. Um, when, they, when they built a facility in Ireland, the Prime Minister of Ireland came to thank them for being in their community and providing a lot of good jobs and, and some real support for, for things that happen in that area. So um, 
It's a company that wants to stay here and they're doing everything possible. I think they have something over 425 employees worldwide and no customers in Vermont. So that's, wow. a, that's a little unusual in itself. That is unusual. So they, they make things here that go elsewhere and, and the money comes back to Vermont, which is, which is kind of nice. Yeah, well, that was my impression, Chris, was that it wasn't going to be a parking lot, that it was going to be an expansion of the business. Well, it may be a little of both. I mean, there's the area out behind the Valley Motors building mm -hmm. where they might yeah, consider doing something. Better than, you know, sitting there. I think it'll be done well. They, they, they don't, you know, they don't scrimp on things and uh, they, they uh, are very, um, it's really, it's really nice to work with a company that takes things as seriously as they do. Mm -hmm. well, so the, certainly a good addition to this community, for sure. So the Brownsfield stuff is through Two Rivers? Um, the part they're, that they're, they're involved there. with us with the, with the um, it's called the Brella Brownfield yeah. Reuse and Reuse. Right. right. They just Everybody got knows. a nice chunk of money to uh, to help out with those. I'm sorry? So they just got awarded a nice chunk of money here yeah, they, uh, recently to do that. Yeah, they get money for assessment. Yeah. Um, they don't have yep. money for, you know, to fix it. No, no, no. But they can, no, no. can help you. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we want to help us Yep. Go ahead, Rick. So this is this is just for the building, correct? Because I know the owner, former owner, spent thousands on uh, state approval for the and remediation for the soils. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So so if the if the building were to be removed, the soils would still need to be you need to deal with them. So basically, what they did is they investigated. They said, okay, the soils are here in its current state. No one's being uh, impacted or or affected by the soils, so they can stay where they are as they are. Uh, but if anything were to change in the site, you'd have to make sure that they're capped uh, appropriately. So that's a portion of it. And the other portion is the hazardous building in terms of the building itself. Okay. Any questions? So I'm assuming you want me to write a letter of support on behalf of the board? Yeah, what's the board feel? Um, so Bob has also asked me to write a letter, um, but I'm happy to do that as a select board member. Um, or are you going to do it as what would be? Sorry, say that again. Were you doing it as the Arnold Block? Um, that was sort of BRI, Arnold Block, Select Board, mm -hmm. any one of those. So I guess I would look to you to say like, what would be your preference mm -hmm. in terms of this. I, I would uh, appreciate a letter of support from the Select Board mm -hmm. and then separate, separate whatever else we can have that. separately, I think would be great. As many individual organizations as possible. Yeah. yeah. So you could do one from the BRI? Lindley, could you earn the Arnold Block? Or and then I'll do one yeah. for the select board if, if you're in agreement. And I talked to yeah, Deirdre right. today about um, the rec council. Yeah, oh, Deirdre, yep, that's what Deirdre she said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what she said. Okay. Okay. That works. Good. Great, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. All right, Rick, you're up. Hey. <laughs> uh, thanks for uh, giving me a few minutes tonight, and thanks you all for doing what you're doing now. It takes a lot of time. So, um, here tonight representing the, the um, town meeting committee. Um, we were formed, as, uh, just to refresh your memories, it's been a while since, since we've been in, but we were formed back in, uh, after the 2013 town meeting, which was held here, when we had an unusually large turnout. Um, <laughs> and there, was, there were problems as far as just physically getting to the ballot box as well as parking, getting access to the building. So um, we formed to try to remediate that to keep the, keep the meeting here. The, the, the hall had recently been renovated and we wanted to keep, keep it here as much as possible. So we, um, we did come up with some solution for the following year um, that worked well. We you know had about half as many as uh, and in attendance as the prior year. So things worked naturally better. Um, but there were still enough folks who were not happy with access, older folks in general, even though we have the handicapped access, the parking is a little bit of an issue as opposed to the school, which is all one level and plenty of parking, et cetera. So the select board um, and everyone kind of agree that uh, 2015 we move over to the school again. Um, and that's where it's been ever since. So what we did from that point was continue um, to explore ways of making 
the meeting more um, accessible to people and increased participation. Um, at that meeting in 2015, we, we had a survey handed out, which we got a um, decent response to, and took uh, many of those suggestions. We, um, bomb year, we um, implemented a, a dinner in, after, just prior to the school meeting in the evening, back when we did that, and that was the, the format before the union, uh, the, the supervisor union changed. Um, so we had added child care, uh, microphone access, um, as well as some working with the select board, some of the um, some minor tweaks to the meeting itself, and mostly as moderator, it, it fell to me. Um, but we also made some large suggestions, which really improved the town report um, through work with, with you guys and uh, the town managers over the years. Um, that's it seems to be more readable. We get we get uh, good feedback um, through that. So the town meeting committee was working on those um, regards specifically for town meeting. We also um, started some occasional um, evening meetings, potluck meetings, um, to try to instill more um, uh, citizen participation in local government as it, as it is. Um, back in 2015, we had some budget meetings. Um, uh, we had some meetings where we brought in just um, town manager, um, members of the school board, and just um, fielded questions from the audience and that sort of thing. Um, since we've had a couple more, we've been working with BRI uh, over the years. Um, uh, through 2016, things have dropped off a little bit and it's time for us to, to get back involved again. Uh, but the reason why it's dropped off on our part is that um, through these informational meetings, we had um, an individual come down from Middlesex, Susan Clark, who's the town moderator, town, town, town moderator there, and they had put together a, um, which we, some of you have seen this, but we have some new members, I'll just pass it around, uh, which is called the Middlesex Moderators <coughs> Manual. And it's basically a handbook for citizens, all, all aspects of their town. Um, so we took that information, we had some conversations with Susan, she's a big advocate of local democracy, slow democracy they call it, where town meetings are important, citizen involvement. Um, so this was an offshoot of that and we, we approached the select board back in 2016 I believe about this project. Uh, the then chair was a little concerned um, because we would be soliciting grants and that sort of thing. The concern was uh, time that would be taken away from town employees working on the grants, implementing the grants. Uh, there was concern in that regard. So we formed an ad hoc committee called the Bethel Information Group. Um, we did all the work on our own. We, we uh, were able to um, bring in a grant from um, the Small Communities uh, Association that uh, $1,500, and we also had $3,000 of local donations. Um, so that money has been used to, number one, we, we researched through Old Town Reports, all the information we could get our hands on above the town, uh, town um, office folks as far as information on who does what where and compile and we compiled all that information and this is just a uh, brief rundown of the table of contents um, other than the, the introduction there's uh, the first part is the town government what are the town facilities and this is really it's really um, designed for Number one, and new people coming into town. Some folks have been here forever who didn't know some of these things and how to, how to get things done, where do you go to, uh, if you have issues. Um, so all that information is, is 
in detail. Um, it, we, had, we have bits in there about town meetings, uh, who are the officials in Bethel, um, the, the boards and commissions, what do they do, who are they, what's involved. And another aspect of this is getting people involved. We, we're still short uh, members of committees, so we need to work on that, obviously. Um, and we have some ideas on that that we'll be bringing to you. Um, but there's also a section on businesses um, in Bethel. There's the uh, history of the town. Uh, it goes on and on. So right now we're at about 88 pages of information. Um, it's, it's designed very similar to that. There's a centerfold map. Um, there will be pictures throughout of different uh, uh, information in town. Um, and very comprehensive guide to Bethel. Really. So we're now, finally, it's taking, it's taking about two years longer than what I have learned to, to get this done. And a lot of it has been once we compile all that information, it, it, we had um, people who were professionals to assimilate all that into a readable format, as well as um, graphic design. So we've uh, spent a little bit of money of our grant towards that. Um, and it's now, as of our December 10th meeting coming up, we should have a draft uh, that's pretty much ready to go to print. Our main goal is to have this ready in some form, hopefully a finished form, um, by town meeting to have to hand out. Um, these, this publication will be at um, insur insurance agencies in town. Uh, we'll have some at, even though we don't have a local realtor, we'll, we'll have some in Randolph at uh, any of the local realtors for folks coming about them, as well as the local businesses, banks and, and uh, shops downtown. So right now, what we have left in our in our account is about um, $2,600, um, which would buy us about 400 copies um, from through Spalding Press. Um, our, this is, the, the idea is that this would be about a five-year publication that would need to be re revised at that point. So um, our best estimate is about 1,000 copies. Um, so we're, we'll, be, we'll be needing a few a uh, bit more money to uh, make up that deficit or that difference, um, which it's about $6,200 to uh, print those thousand copies. We have $2,650 left, so um, we'll be, we're already looking for some other grant money. And naturally, if there's anything that the town might have to help us out, we'd be happy. But we fully understand you guys are, are doing a great job keeping keeping the budget um, where it should be. Um, but, Coin drop. What coin? No, no, no. You will not see a coin drop. I've done too many of those. Mm. And too many people. So I think you already, I, one of the questions I had in my head, you just answered here a second ago with it's a five year rotation, looks like, yeah. on, on that. Um, is, is there any way of, I mean, obviously, the, the least amount of pages that's in the document, the cheaper it is to produce. So. Seeing that Middlesex is probably a little bit larger town than ours, and theirs it's is, a lot less. and theirs is 38 pages. Right. Is there any way of condensing that That's down right. farther to make it cheaper to produce, or both through uh, format and a little more editing work, work down? Spalding Press would at least like to see it down to 80 because that's what works best for this binder, binder the, the staple binding. Um, but yeah, we're we're working on getting it down. Although I don't, I believe it's going to be still significantly more than yours. Because you know how it is too, you know, the, the more pages, the less likely somebody's going to go through the whole, you know, if it's a 25 page book, then people are more apt to right. take more interest in it, I guess, than, than a bigger novel yeah. version, you know. And I think it's, it became, uh, the more, you know, the, the more we dove into it, the more information we got, it kind of grew uh, just a little bit more than what we had planned. How many how many copies do we print of the town report a year, Therese? 
trying to remember how many we did last year, and I know we're going to do 500 less this year. Yeah, I think we, we were saying. Year. I still have two cases left, and right. we had dropped it significantly. But yeah, and remember that's a one-year deal, and that's right. right. And um, we're mailing, but we're mailing it to all the registered voters right. and owners. So mm -hmm. I think that we're down, we're down to, to under 2,000. I think. Yeah, so we're done, and we're going to be less too. But you said you might be putting, uh, not here, you haven't said this, but uh, about a website. So yes, people this could, will. So we could link to it. I asked Kelly if you guys had your own website, and, and then if you printed less copies, but you had some out, you know, if we had a master copy that was in a three hole binder, we could certainly make someone a copy if they came in looking for it. And because it's so specific, mm -hmm. a thousand just seems <clears throat> really. Taking your advice, and we'll take that back to in our conversation before this meeting. Yeah. Um, we haven't met since then, so I will, I'll be taking that back. But I was asked to make a presentation mm -hmm. that I've done tonight, mm -hmm. and we will take all of this into consideration. Mm -hmm. As we say, we realize um, getting the full amount for a thousand may not be feasible. Mm -hmm. But there are going to be other, there's going to be electronic versions, so people will be able to access it that way. Um, and then a few hard copies, because Obviously, there's still some folks who, who don't have electronic devices on the web. I do wonder if Penny, you know, she, I'm, you know, certainly if, if she could do them in runs, like if she did you know, a couple hundred now, and then you can kind of monitor how it went, and then more later or something like that. I don't know, but yeah. I mean, I gotta think that you know nowadays probably you know maybe half half of the population will probably electronically look at it. You know. Yeah. So you know, I. Don't know what that number is, but you know, you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm more apt to go on the website and and hit the the hyperlink and look at it than I am to. Page. Seems yeah, have it. Have mm -hmm. a, that's me. But yeah. you know, Doug yeah. might might like his copy to put it put at the house. <laughs> or, so, but I think the 80 page length too is a something that we can take a look at. Maybe cutting that back. So I agree with Chris when you, you get, too much you know, money. people get out 25 pages, then they'll say, oh, well, next time, <laughs> you know, and uh, yes. so it may not get. Yeah, hopefully the table of contents will totally get people utilized. where they want to be without, you know, it's not designed mm -hmm. to be a magazine, but mm -hmm. more information. So I also, on the other part of um, our mission, is to make sure folks are aware when the budget is being prepared because that's the time we want to get people in here and not town meeting, you know. That's the time for them to ask questions too, but if they're informed beforehand, lots mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And in the past, we've seen that very, very helpful. Um, when we get to town meeting, people are well aware of where we stand. So tonight, I see your discussion, just the general fund. Yeah, it's the entire budget, not water sewer, but the entire town budget. But it's a discussion only. All, you know, we do the same thing that we did last year, which was advertise budget informational. Okay. So this is their first look at the whole thing. Yeah. And um, so we'll do that as we did before. And I think, I guess the summary I put out, I'm trying to remember what I did last year. I think I put the summary for town report out um, prior to town meeting too as well, and I'll do that again this year so that people know, you know, when they come to town meeting. But the next meeting, we'll start actually advertising more for the budget informationals. But, I mean, we obviously it's out in the packet, and it's online, and the agenda's out, and we do still post all those things. But I'll make a note for the December 9th and the December, maybe it's 22nd, whatever, on the board out front that they're budget informationals as well. Okay, and we'll do our thing too as far as front porch form. Mm -hmm. and other means of, of getting the word out. Yeah, and Kelly put something out on Facebook, and, and um, I think now I guess she's going to give stuff to Lisa to post on Front Porch Forum, I guess, because we don't have our own Front Porch Forum account. You have one? There's a Bethel Community Forum that's a Facebook page. Uh-huh. There's a bunch of administrators. Uh -huh. But Front Porch Forum is a separate thing. It's like a statewide business. Right, no, I know what that is. Do you have a front, uh, guys, for some reason, I was under the impression that you manage the town's Front Porch Forum page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, but I'm an, I'm an admin on the Bethel community.
community forum. Oh, okay. Well, right. that's all right. So on the Facebook. I, all right, then Kelly must have misunderstood. So I will get her. Yeah. I, to, I've been getting her to start. I've been asking her to start one ourselves. Yeah, I don't think there's a Bethel front porch okay, forum well, page be. per se. So that way we can no. control it. Really, just enter. It's easy enough to do. It takes yeah, I, I had right. talked to her about it. I guess yeah. it was just a mix up. So I'll make sure that happens, and then. So we can do that as well. But yes, this is the first time that they're getting a look at the whole thing, but it's just kind of a, we'll bring in department heads next week and if, you know, that sort of thing. Just, but we're just looking at the big picture tonight. Great, okay. So Rick, thanks very much. Uh, just a quick, yes. uh, I know space is sort of an issue, but have you thought about having local businesses sponsor, do sponsorships and have a little spot in yeah, we did it one time. We did it one time. But, um, we didn't want to take up a lot of space with that. That great, granted, it's a trade off. It's, yeah. it's a way to pay for it. But, right, uh, just thinking about trying to find the money to yeah. sponsor more of it. It's potentially a good way to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah space is an issue. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Everybody had in their packets the um, the Prouty um, bicycle race for next July. So they're just looking to they're looking to just use the um, the River Street piece coming out under the trust and then and then out 107. So it shouldn't really. I guess the first thing I had said to Teresa, I thought was, oh, I hope they're not going through the downtown, but. It looks like that they're going to avoid that. So, mm -hmm. they must have to get permits from the state of Vermont to use state highway. So, I'm sure they, because as we had these specific permit, we don't, but the state will. I'm yeah. sure she knows that because they've done it for a while. Do they have any <clears throat> estimate about how long they'll it'll take from the first vehicle to the follow-up vehicle? She said, and more than four thousand, but just a pen. Inspiring two-day, 200-mile ride. Yeah, I've read all that, but I didn't see any about no. people going through Bethel. No, well. it doesn't. We're no, she just said. Yeah, we got to deal with it. Yeah, I was going to say she didn't say. We go through it in the morning pretty rapidly. Yeah. I think it's only one day, two. Yeah. Two-day event, but they kind of go through two Bethel. Two-day event. Yeah, one day. One day. Yeah. No, yeah. She, she doesn't say in here. She just says 37.9. We're about mile at mile marker until <clears throat> on Main Street, and then yeah, so he's right there. So we come up 107 there. past the state police. But like I said, she'd need a state permit. You guys have apparently done it before. Maybe you just didn't know you. This isn't your first year, is it? No, we've been running for a fourth number of years. Yeah. So maybe it just yeah. never came from the select board before. No, because it's always been the same route. Yeah. Starts at Ferry or something. So um. So see, you've been doing it. It didn't even cause a disruption. So you're you're good. Yep. I'm sinking it under the wire. And it's on a, it's on a Friday. Usually. Yeah, Friday, July 10th. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Busy. Do you need a motion for that, or? Um, you might as well make one. Why not? So. Anybody want to make a motion? We should actually make a motion. Make a motion um, to accept the Prouty yeah, benefits bicycle ride on July 10th. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Yeah, we had class four highway policy. All right, so I want to let you know Mo called today since he couldn't be here and he said this that. He was wondering about, I guess he, he said, Chris, you would know because he brought this up in the past, that he doesn't think that we should allow motor vehicles on the class four roads, basically till the mud is gone, because he doesn't want them to, um, in the spring till, you know, like May 15th, because he doesn't want people, you know, tearing up the class four roads, since we don't really maintain them much, that, um, so I, do you remember that as a conversation in the past? I, I mean, I that you mean 
Post it. Well, I talked to him. No. Face well, I asked him that. I said he You mean, you know, vehicles other than the residents that live right. on themselves, like yes. ATVs and yep, because he that said, kind of stuff? Or? Um, I said, you're talking about, because we can post it for weight limits, and I wasn't sure at first. He just wanted to make sure that we actually, that the road foreman actually did that. But he's like, mm -hmm. no, even more so. He said, I, except for residents, he didn't think that the select board should allow people on class four roads if they weren't residents. Um, until after I mean we currently I guess he's just concerned because you know it's muddy and he doesn't want people out there tearing I mean we currently post our roads for mud season anyways so class three class two and three yeah I mean you can just add four to that yeah um, I'm just telling you what but I mean majority of the people that access those class four roads are either the property owners themselves or some of the recreational you know, four wheeler mm -hmm. type club. See, te technically, I don't believe but we can. You can gate and lock a class four road. Period. Yeah. But we do. Up on uh, Hooper Hollow, that road that goes up on top of the mountain, that's gated in the mud season and locked. I don't know who has. The key. It says the select board member. You can yeah. grant permission to an adjoining anyway, landowner. The point is that if, if you didn't do that and a couple of these guys with the big mudder tire trucks would go up there and they'd make two passes and that would be completely destroyed. And that's what Mo wants to not mm -hmm. see happen. Right. He doesn't want people out there jeeping. I mean, right. the road that goes from Wimp Sanders Farm out to Randolph, I can remember driving that with a car. And now I'm not sure I want to take my tractor out there because of that. Yeah. I mean, I guess all we can do is we could you know, put it under the umbrella of the mud season type rules. I mean, you not lock and gate it, but if well, someone is a- it says that the select board can exercise control of class four highways to ensure that integrity is public rights of way yep. by means which may include, but are not limited to, and it has like six or seven- Prohibition or things. restriction of use by motor or vehicles. So I think, yeah. I think we have this, this policy or whatever it's called, the policy, oh gives us the right to say, okay, the mud's two feet deep, this road is not up, mm -hmm. cannot be used until such a time as it's not. Right, because I know he, I'm, I'm assuming that the road foreman obviously puts out signs with, you know, posting weight limits and that you have signs on the road that says that they're, you know, closed till April 15th, you have to call and get permission, but does, do you actually go out, or, Chris, are you saying that you post some of these roads about mud season, or are you just talking about the standard weight limit? Well, I think you, you have the standard language yeah. of, you know, you know, between, you know, whatever, April, May time frame that, um, that we do post our roads. I mean, so you have the right to in this policy. It's just going to be mm -hmm. making sure that it gets done. What are some of the changes? Um, so this, this class four road policy now, because right now we don't have a you policy, uh, but I guess what have we been operating on? <laughs> um, you know, is there? I mean, with this policy here, is there anything that we're we're doing now that's going to drastically change, or is there anything that we're not doing now that's going to? Well, I'm not sure that. You how is it going to impact people? Or I'm not sure that you you have yeah. a sort of. I won't see. I mean, you have a. What's the word? You guys have an existing policy now um, that it's called, what was the name of it? Something. Oh, you have a curb cut and excavation ordinance that got passed in the 80s that it doesn't appear that's been enforced because you do have several people that are running logging operations and, since, and I don't know if Greg knew about them. I have no idea, there's no paper trail. So I don't know if he authorized some of these, but it seems as though, it seems to me that you've had a policy, like in this policy that got passed in the 80s before any of you were board members, it said that the residents were responsible for the culverts. Well, obviously you didn't enforce that because they're all filled up and so hence we're gonna clean them back up and turn them back over to the residents. Um, the other thing is too is um, we've had a couple issues with class four roads recently, as so I have and since June with people that are upset because they're maintaining a section of class four road and then somebody's coming in and logging or a neighbor up the road is tearing up the property. So you also don't have a policy currently in place whether or not you are going to maintain roads 
or maintain bridges and culverts on class four. And that continues to come up. Um, and when I asked you last time in last meeting, you said you didn't plan on, you didn't want to maintain culverts or bridges on class four roads. So this puts it in a policy, which I think eventually it's gonna come up. So it's best that you have a policy in place and that way you're treating everybody the same. And I, so, you know, I, I, I guess this that. growing up, <clears throat> you know, I've lived in three different towns and it seemed to always been the, when it came to class four roads, it was, you know, the town wasn't liable really for anything on the class four roads, it was the residents of those roads. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's uh, installing a culvert or a water bar or doing some ditching or doing some grading. Um, do, you, do you guys know any, how things have operated in Bethel on the class four roads in the past, Doug, or? Of course, my knowledge on it, that <clears throat> from very from what the town is responsible for culverts. That's the only thing, but if you're going to allow people to come across on the class four roads, then I think the town should be responsible. You want to let traffic go across that road when a landowner's got land on the left and right side of the road. Mm -hmm. And you're going to allow people to go through that. I'm like, Pond Road, for example, they can go from there all the way over to into Gilead. I'm trying to think of the road there that um, Bayon. And it connects to buying. Mm -hmm. So if you allow people from there to go all the way across there, stuff like that, I'm mean, like, you can do it with a Jeep mm -hmm. or four wheel or something like that, or definitely take a car over there. But if you want allow people to travel that road, then I think the town should be responsible for it. Well, I mean, it's difficult. You can't not stop. You can't stop uh, people from true. traveling yeah. on class four roads. And I mean, the statute is just vague enough that it, it the statute actually says that. Um, you can, you know, pr to extend, the, they'll maintain them to the extent required by necessity and the public good and convenience of the inhabitants of the town and when staff and financial resources allow. So <laughs> it's hard, you know, when people buy a property off on class four road, they know they're buying on class four road and that they're gonna right. have to maintain it. That's my, certainly my opinion. But so you're saying that in the past, when you were here, when you worked for the town of Bethel, did you maintain culverts yeah, on right. class four they, roads? They maintained the culverts the culvert on the crack four roads. You did? We, we, at least I know for a fact we have been out in, since I've been on the road, we have, we're not in the place of and, and I think that's some of the issues of why we're looking at policy is, you know, I guess, you know, my whole impression on it is that, you know, class four roads, you know, the town doesn't do any maintaining of those roads. Uh, but it seems, though, in the town, over, you know, if you talk to different administrations in this town, you know, over the time that some did some things and some didn't do any. And it's, you know, we haven't really been consistent on, you know, either putting a culvert in the ground or grading it or plowing. Um, you know, so we need yeah. some sort of consistent language. and. Um, that's true, because those chickens are coming home to roost now, because I'm getting calls from people who are saying oh, they heard through that so-and-so was reimbursed because they put a culvert in and a town paid for that culvert, and then other people are saying, no, in my tenure here, we've never done work on class four roads, and then someone else, and so I don't know if people had made a side deal with somebody else, like a prior town manager or you know, um, or what, and each road foreman is operated differently, and so we need a policy so that we're managing people, you know, fairly. Consistently. And yeah. consistently, and fairly. Because I, I you know, because mm -hmm. um, when I talk to other people, they're saying they didn't maintain culverts on class four roads, but do you know, Ryan, have you ever known? You know, when me and David, the Snowmobile Club stuff, we always, the Snowmobile Club always maintained the, did the work that we needed to do. Town was never involved. And, yeah. and I think for the most part, from what I've heard and seen, that for the most part we don't do anything on class four roads. Right. However, there have been times where we have. Yeah. And you know, all it takes is for us to do something for one person on one road and then that kind of opens up the whole can to everybody. Um, but not having a policy to go back on, right. you know, again, um, you know, it's no different than, you know, we're talking about drive culverts and things. And right. if you go out, you'll see a, a new home that was built, you know, maybe 10 years ago and there's no drive culvert, you know. Um, you know, why wasn't there one, you know, and who, who maintains that and who right. doesn't? And, 
Yeah. You know, it used to be, you know, in towns I've been in that if you're a homeowner and you build a home, you're in charge of putting the drive culvert in and then the town would maintain it afterwards um, type deal. But we don't, you know, there's a lot of those things that no, we don't have I'm for policies. I'm working on that one next. The highway access permit is next. That's because you're trying to take the one from <laughs> the 80s and update it to, to now. Right. That's a little touchy too because if those culverts fail, that can damage the road. Right. That's kind of, you may want to maintain it just to save the road. Right. You know, it's, but those are things that are out there that we just don't, right. it, you know, shame on us not having a policy that we can follow um, because when we don't have a policy, what ends up happening is, you know, we take every, every instance a little different, right? You know, and, yeah. you know, Therese won't be here forever and the next person that comes in will do things a little bit different than Therese did and she's doing yeah. a little bit different than, you know, Greg did and so yeah. on and so forth, so. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense because you, you're right and, and because we have a policy that I found with, with most help and that was written in the 80s that said residents were going to maintain the culverts but nobody was enforcing it right. so you know now we have a bunch of plug culverts and mm. so we need to decide what we're going to do and i'm like chris where i came from it was the resident if you built a new drive you put in the driveway culvert for our specifications we checked your work you paid for it done and then we maintained it so if one failed later we maintained it but that is not apparently what was done here so mm. so nothing was done so now we get somebody did something right. once upon a time but in the last few years they have not been maintained so you know we're trying to these things come up the other hard part for the class four town highways different because it's so vague different towns do different things mm -hmm. when people move in they assume that because some towns i know and again it's not all class four right town highway, but they'll rate them once a year mm -hmm. which to me is more than what the town needs to do but mm -hmm. But they come in with those assumptions, so yeah. it's good to have a policy anyway. And, and, and right now, not having a policy, we can't look out to the league, for instance, because the league's is so and this, vague you know, that you know this is actually you could read into policy. it however you want. And this is a model policy right. that came from the league that yeah. I um, looked at and tried to modify it a little bit for Bethel. But I mean, basically, it's this is their homes. Mm -hmm. These are the statutes. These are the definitions. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to. Um, but it would help because we had an instance, or I have an instance, where someone who lives on a class four is maintaining it. They put in a lot of money, and then she, you know, she'd say, "Well, I'd like to do a um, make a road maintenance agreement with my neighbors." I'm like, "You can't. You don't own it. We own it. So you can maintain it, but you guys can't. Mm -hmm. You know, into a legal agreement that a road that isn't yours." Uh, so it's can hopefully clear up a couple of things. And you know, not to complicate this, but. You know, and doing the FEMA work this summer, there are instances out there of us having class three roads that don't have any houses on the class three roads that go to class four roads. So, which makes it tricky because, you know, plowing wise, if you're gonna plow, you know, if, let's say it's a half a mile class three road to get to the class four road, nobody lives on it. Yeah. Why is it a class three road, you know? Why yeah. is the whole road not a class four road? I, like the fair. Yeah, I don't understand that. You know, thing. that's an interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So that. those are you know, and I'm sure there's more instances of those out there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Doug's got a bunch of them in his pocket, but you know, of those cases that, yeah, you know, why is it a three, not a four? Right. So they've actually kicked them out of three and into four. Yeah. You what? In the past, they've actually been some instances where they've kicked them out of a class three road and turned it into right. a four road. And I think you're right. We have a couple places, and that came up during FEMA because you can't get fake, uh, FEMA on class four roads. And Chris called me once and was like, "Listen, this is where we are. Are you where is this?" I'm like, "Oh, this is where it ends on the map." And it's like Ringe and Thayer, that little piece of Ringe, until it takes hooks to right to Thayer. It's three. And then there's there's no house in any of us. How it ever started, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I read back a ways, but and then and then in the winter time we don't plow it, right? Yeah. We don't, you know, so it's right. you know, I, I don't know. It's so so you lose a little state highway, but to maintain those things, some of it's crazy. A small amount of little aid that you get for two tenths of a mile know. road is it's true, especially peanuts. that range. Yeah. But you're right, and I think yeah. that those are the little road they do. Bundy <laughs> <laughs> Road and Jefferson I Road. Yeah. I mean, I thought, Therese, that I, you know, I read through it and I thought it looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the only comment that I would have on it is that we should get it out onto the web page and, mm -hmm. 
give uh, ample time for people to um, look at it and get some comments back. Um, obviously, it does impact people. Um, um, I guess that would be my only thing. Um, it's definitely a policy that we do need to have in place. And, um, but um, I don't know what our time frame is on having to implement the policy, but I think no, at least if we had a review time to get some feedback, kind of like what we're doing with the, with trash. the trash ordinance, get mm -hmm. the feedback, let's, you know, and then go from there. The only, the only I just thing wanted I, to get it out because, well, it's just one of the many things I need to clean up, so <laughs> this was on the list. The only confusion I had was I didn't know what pen, the term pen meant. Like if they're going to gate it? Yeah, well, I, I did. I, I looked it up. <laughs> so oh. Figured out what it was, but uh, it's not a, oh, it's a term we might want to clarify. So, that is. so you don't want to adopt it. You want to put it out for public comment. Okay. So do you want to put it on the next um, agenda, or do you want it out for a month? What's your... I would probably skip the next meeting with it. I'd put it out there so it's enough time. Okay. And then, you know, how it is, I mean, you're either going to get comments back quickly or not. And if it doesn't right. look like we're really getting much traction out there on the comments, then, you know, we can okay. look at it and act on it faster. If it looks like we're getting a lot of comments on it, then maybe we'd leave it out there a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Because like I said, I'm still... I've got part of the highway access mm -hmm. permit done, the next one done, so, which goes with this anyway, so. And, and I next. think people just need to understand that, you know, this isn't a policy that we're just making up and we're just going to stop service because, you know, a, a very large majority right now is this is the way we're dealing with class four roads, it's just we don't have a policy mm -hmm. out there. Um, right. And by having the policy, it will be fair and there won't be any side deals that somebody yeah, got one, one piece of their road graded or a load of gravel dumped or something, you know, um, or a culvert put in or, you know, however that goes. Patrice, can you warn that as an actual hearing? You could. Um, well, it's not an ordinance. Okay. It's just a policy. Just a policy, it's yeah. yeah. It has a whole other thing. Yeah. Mm. It's just a policy. You know, it's a policy. We could certainly, um, if we don't get any comment, I mean, if it was, I've sent it to a, two residents of one class four road, Spooner Road. I sent it to Michael and Bill Crossman, or I mailed, I emailed it to Bill Crossman, so, but I put a copy in the mail to his brother, Mike, and, um, because they have some issues with their road ongoing, but, and there was another lady. So I have a couple people that contacted me that I could send it to them. But since it's not an ordinance, it doesn't have to go through that Got process. Yeah. But as we know, everybody's welcome to this. <laughs> However, if we were going to take a piece of road from a class three to a class four, oh, then we would have process. to warn, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. warn that. Sure. Yes, if you're going to do that, but, that's a process. To go but this is just policy to keep us on the straight and narrow and yeah. treat everybody fairly and mm -hmm. no wandering. But yeah, I'll make an, I'll send it to a the board have any further comments or so right now we're good with yep. putting it out um get some feedback on it and and if, we'll, if something comes up it can be amended of course absolutely yeah. so maybe we'll give it a month and then we'll uh, put it back on the yep. agenda um, no. but other than that i thought it was good um, i didn't have any changes as written so are we trying to adapt the policy with our track four roads Say that again. On the class four roads, are we trying to uh, adapt the policy on it about what maintaining them? Who yeah. Goes to it? That's, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This just outlines what the town's responsibility is for class four roads. Yep. Okay. It adheres to the statute and, and um, kind of. It, it makes it easier for the highway department too, because if someone lives on the class four and I don't know, let's say there's a culvert issue, then it clearly can be pointed out that you know the policy is that that's you know the ownership of. The individuals that live on the road or or grading or whatever that is so it doesn't put you you know it doesn't put the highway department in a situation where okay well i got to get out there and change it you know where you can say oh, unfortunately the class board road policy states this and you know do you want a copy of it this will be on 
Do you go say you gonna put it on the internet or something? Yeah. Uh, do you want a copy of it though? I'll give you mine. Yeah. I just put my picture up. You could take mine because I can make more. No, you can't. In the budget, you were cutting that. Yeah. Cut the paper on. <laughs> You've gotten you twice now, Teresa, already. That's right. Here you go. Yours isn't double sided. <laughs> no, no. Oh, she's really burning through it. No, she doesn't. <laughs> I'm the original. Burning through it. So, um, all right, that's fine. Anything further, class four pol road policy? Draft? Um, just one other thing. I know. For the, the colds and stuff. Now, what about if the water is naturally redirect? Yes. The colds for the damper is not going to be big enough, and then the water just goes around and takes out portions of another another area. Like one pond road, for an example. The cold there is way too small. We get heavy rain, it just washes another section right down every time. We fill it in, and it comes right back and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something like that is kind of concerning. We put that much time in getting it done, and then because the water is directed itself, but we're not allowed to go into it to redirect the water. I think I'm not. Well, I'll tell you this: you get the same speech that, that I got from the Jared board, the A and R. Yeah, basically, you just the water is going to do what the water is going to do because okay. we had this issue. You know, obviously in April, as you're aware, and, and I asked him about that getting in, and you know. We have water that's hitting the side of like, the right bridge, and I asked him about that. And, you know, I said he's not going to let us in the river, and he said that for years they allowed people in the river to channel them out and redirect the river, and they didn't feel like it got them anywhere. So, um, you know, they're kind of what they're doing with their codes and standards, and, and certainly Ryan can speak to this. Is they're increasing the size, like the bridge was this big, now it's got to be this big, and like, they're. No. So I think that you're experiencing what we are. What they're looking for is a place where it can go, the water can yeah, crest exactly. over you, and you then proceed. The screen there, it comes down this way, but then you see it banking off to your left. I know. And where you, you look at it, well, that should go in the direction that already wiped this section out. Yeah. But once the, the flood is gone, then it starts redirecting in the way it was originally set. Yeah. And then we just can't direct everything right across to that one area. And still meet the same stream now. Like, it's kind of funny. I mean, it's, we go through this ourselves. So what they're looking for is places for it to overflow where you have nothing except grass so that it can recede and go back in without bringing much debris with it. But, you know. I need to smoke some of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you. They believe that in the mom. That is the speech I got. you got to let it wiggle. Yeah, you, gotta let it, you have to let it what? The river's got a wiggle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what we hear too. So or when it happens you get in the stream quickly and you yeah, do what you need to do and you get out. Yeah. Nobody knows. <clears throat> All right. The Lister's office <clears throat> staff. Looks like um, Louise wanted to add a staff to the Lister's office. Judy has been in and she seems to enjoy it. She has a good history with computer skills and been in the insurance industry for a long time. Um, I have not received a um, letter of resignation yet from Roberta, but I expect that to be coming as we have mentioned at a prior meeting that it looks like Louise, Louise's term is up in March. We assume that Jim is also going to resign and, and Roberta is moving from Bethel. So um, certainly, um, Louise was, you know, interested in finding some people, and, and Judy came in and seems to really like it, and certainly has a very good attention for detail and enjoying it. So Louise has asked that you basically appoint her right now as staff because uh, you don't have any spots to put her in, and then she could run in March. Yeah, she'd be voted on in March. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, I was kind of looking at it, and being that, well, the lister positions are currently full mm -hmm. so so we can't make an appointment because there's no not there's, as a lister there's no right and then if it's staff i don't think that we have the the, the lister should be able to appoint an office they can't staff you, without you can appointment hire, right? you can hire staff for the lister's office the select board would do that mm -hmm. and you could make appointments to an open seat but but, but is that through the select board we would 
you would make an appointment to an open seat and you would hire their staff. And yes. hire? Oh, mm -hmm. I just thought we were on the appointment, so I just didn't see the need of why we needed to be in the process. Right, I exactly. I mean, I guess. Because we're not appointing anybody. Right, the town manager gonna hire. would hire staff, I suppose. I mean, I do all the other mm -hmm. hiring, so, and she would be staff. Yeah. So, um, I didn't think of it that way, I guess. I was I was waiting because I thought I was going to have another one <coughs> here to right. take you back with this, but I don't. But as far as the board goes, I mean, we were just here to appoint. So if, if, if there was a, a seat available, then we could appoint. Mm -hmm. If you're just looking for somebody to fill some hours of staff, clerk, you know, yeah. the good clerk news work, is that then she's training her right now you should while Louise is still here, so which is great. So mm -hmm. I had thought we might have an appointment. You might be able to appoint her if I had a letter of resignation, but I don't. Yeah. So I would say right now, I mean, I, unless anybody I'll on the board hire. sees something different, mm -hmm. just hire. don't need anything from us here. No. So if we don't have If the role becomes vacant before the, the yep. term, then, then we would need a, um, you know, two letters. Okay. So um, I'll just make a note that I'll anybody have an answer that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for it. And you're looking to sell the van track, sidewalk plow, and the big old safe? Yeah, so um, the sidewalk plow, so let's talk about that. This last time we had done, we talked about the budget, and um, I had $10,000 in there for a zero-turn mower, which was the request that I had received. And it wasn't until after the meeting when I talked to Morgan and said, all right, Talk to me about your, plow, your mowing situation here. He said that the the um, part of Evine, the fire department, the wreck gets really thick if he too thick to buy, mow it biweekly. So he does do sections of it sometimes weekly. And then of course he has P Vine, River Street Bridge, the Three Triangles, Fort Fortitude, um, the Avon Triangle. Town Hall, Town Office, uh, Bethel Mills Pump Station, and he does all the trim it, and he trims all the pump stations. So he said it takes him three to three and a half days a week, so 30 to 35 hours to trim and mow everything. So his feeling is that we could cut about a day off that if he had a zero trim. So we talked about this, as I said, well, what about you know the Kubota or the van tracks? Apparently. They had spoken with Greg, and um, no one mentioned it to me. So, they, the plan is to get rid of the van tracks. Apparently, when they bought it, it doesn't appear that it was the right piece of equipment for the job. He said that it cannot run chains on it. This is for Morgan. That the van tracks cannot run chains because the bumper is so low to the wheels. He said it's really hard to keep it on a sidewalk. It's belt driven, so if he's using the blower, the snow blower, it goes through one or two belts per storm. And he said that the salter that fits on it doesn't work properly, it's really slow, and it won't discharge sand. So he has been using the Kubota, which he said is in rough shape exterior, but runs really nicely. The Kubota has a straight angle plow, and has better traction, more power, has a workable snow blower. Um, it does not, however, have the sweeper attachment. So apparently Greg had looked at trading the Vantrex for a zero turn, but nobody wanted to make that deal. So it just seems to me like if you did that, you'd have cash coming back to you. So why not just sell the Vantrex outright, like your VLCT or um, you know on their website and through their magazine or you know, through Craigslist. And then, I do, you'd have to buy a broom attachment for the Kubota, which apparently, I mean, we we used it like when the tractor trailer ran into that building on South Main Street. And I know Tim has used it a few times, the sweeper and the band track stick like around when they've done like water repairs and water digs. But, so <clears throat> whether or not you want to buy the zero turn is secondary. Apparently we need to sell the van tracks because it's a piece of equipment that they're not using. So 
So what what type of value does the van tracks have? I they we were thinking have any estimate of twelve to fifteen thousand is what they were saying. But is, is what it's I worth? Can't tell you that for sure myself because I don't know. It's like half of what we paid for it. I have you paid. Why paid, no idea. Paid a ton of money for that thing. Well, it sounds like it wasn't. If what Morgan is saying is correct, which you know I believe that he believes this is the fact that it wasn't the right piece of equipment that they shouldn't have bought it originally anyways. When that, when that I can only really tell you what I know. When that piece of equipment was born, mm -hmm. that we were darn high was running it, it was purchased due to the fact that anything else was too big. It was more that specific size was to get between the telephone poles and everything else. We also cured this slide off the, off the thing. It's all, all wheel drive. Tires were studded, but the thing on this, it was the cab would sometimes would slide and slide into the telephone pole, break the door windows and everything else. So since I've been here, I think oh. we replaced three of those windows already. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong on that, but maybe, maybe do two, but at least two or three windows were broken on the doors. Mm -hmm. And of course, the belt and stuff that's been going bad with that, I think a lot of it had to do with not the variance and stuff not being maintained properly. We'll give it that wing on the bird, the belt's going to jump. Because mm -hmm. it, it was, it's, you run it hard and you put it away wet. Right. If you don't maintain it, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. it, it looked like the Kubota was doing a good job this yeah. morning with the sidewalks were all cleared off. The Kubota is doing a good job from what I've seen, but I don't think we had a sand on the back of that Kubota. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what these all the streets are, all the sidewalks. You drive it with a pickup truck. That's what I think. I yeah, he's been driving the sidewalk with a pickup truck. The curb. Morgan's been doing it. I think that's exactly right. So I think by using that, it's kind of a waste for right now if you don't have nothing else you don't have nothing else to do with hmm. but i think that's a lot of waste of salt going up against the buildings hitting the buildings and stuff like that when you walk down the street still in the summertime you look up against the building you got quite a bit of salt still left up, up against the buildings there you go. but you know i mean like i, I agree with the the uh zero turn you get the right size and everything else for it but some of the, the zero turns is not going to work very well in small buildings you're going to need to push more well, and I know some of these he trims, just like uh, the Avon Triangle. He said that's just all he does is weed whack it. So does, would the Kubota have the ability to have a sander? We used to have a, what you call it, I think, I'm, don't get me wrong on, on, on it, but it used to be a drum sander. You put the salt into it, it would just be able to drive set and be connected to it and turn on the little propeller back to it. Which you can adjust that to the amount of salt coming out. And you can did it work? Through. It worked fine because with, with the pop, you know, it just didn't work anymore. It was, again, the drive shaft, again, you don't grease them, they go to okay. salt in into it, it's going to see some other things. So, you know, the equipment's got to be maintained in order for them to work. Well, absolutely. But it didn't work. It, it, it worked. It worked fine when we had it. Wow. So, the, so then I need to speak to Morgan about how he's salt on the sidewalks. Does anybody have any issue with the van tracks? Potentially selling that if we get the right dollar for it. Doesn't seem like no, it's doing us any good. No, it's sitting out there inside the garage, covered with snow. Okay. Something else on the uh, van tracks too. It, it comes with a lot of attachments. And the sweeper. Yeah, it says sweeper, snow blower. Yeah, mower deck. A lot of attachments came with it. Quite a bit of money put into that. Thirty grand for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I got a question. How much money did the town pay in a few years that they had the mowing hired out? Oh, when we contracted the mowing? Let me see. I have to think. I could tell you. I should have the history in here. I was going to say it was probably oh, in the it says ten to fifteen thousand. Yeah. So how much money do we pay a guy to mow two to three days a week all summer long? We could be doing other stuff helping maintain the secondary road. That position was made when the made and it never turned out to what it was made. And I've made the comment before, and Greg's grinning like he did last mm -hmm. time. It was it was just one of them. It's we, not a position that's we paid there. out um, that? the extra the fifth guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's other stuff. Yeah. 
And now that we're talking about not firing. Cut any brush? Huh? When's the last time anybody cut any brush? Right. So for like ten grand, you're gonna buy a, a couple. You're gonna buy a new <laughs> new zero turn more. You're paying. I, I cut a couple myself the other day. I think so. It looks like in um, this up correctly, eighteen nineteen, we paid out eight thousand eight twenty. But is this? Let's see. And then I'm trying to remember how. Yeah. So we paid out eighty eight hundred dollars because last year what I had done is taken went from. When Greg had asked me to figure out the budget, basically I had figured out so that 62.5% of Morgan's time went to the highway, 15.6% I think went to, 18% um, went to water, and then the, was that 14.6 or something went to, um, so 62.5, yeah, went to the parks. and. I actually sat down this year and said, now that I knew how long it took him to mow, and I calculated out exactly how many hours, and I reduced his amount of hours for um, the highway, and ended up that this year in this budget, proposed budget, is to make it reflective of how many hours he's working, is 27.5% of Morgan's time. So I'm actually upping it this year to 11 thousand six hundred and fifty four dollars but that's just wages that doesn't include social security medicare retirement health insurance down the workers comp that we put there paying twenty odd thousand dollars a summer to have a town employee mow the lawn when we can have it done for eight thousand yeah. dollars so he was so that's how it works or more you figure in retirement and all that you know it's yeah. a seventy eight thousand dollar a year job and you figure that all in with that employee yeah of course the other thing we have to be careful too is you know, back then, we didn't know what anything cost us in this town. No, so yeah. it may say eighty eight hundred, but it might have cost us fourteen thousand because nobody knew. Yeah. We just that wrote was, checks, and you know, there was there was the contracting worked out exactly as reliably as people had hoped. Yeah, well, and then that's all in the bidding process. So yeah. I mean, it's probably something we probably ought to be thinking. Guys, most most mm -hmm. cemeteries so do a great job on time. It doesn't matter what the weather is, they mm -hmm. do a great job. So there are people out there that would do what you asked them to do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I think that the intention was of Greg's, what he said, what I heard him say to the board was that that way Morgan would do mowing, obviously he'd do water, some water work, which he does do. And then, um, so I think it was the quote unquote utility position that he was going for. That was the, um, I don't, sidewalk was supposed to be done all during the storm. Right. And it turned into more and more and more. Yeah. And which didn't end up like working out last year, which is working out now, but didn't work out last year. So, yeah, no, I'm just saying what. Well, exactly. So, anyways, that was the comment about the van tracks. So, I don't know the van tracks, and I have not had it appraised. This is just a number that they someone threw at me saying they, what they thought it was worth. I don't know how many hours are on it. So it seems as though somebody would be able to give us a decent appraisal of what it would be worth. Because it, it's a 2015, and you said you bought it for about 30 grand? Yeah, that, was the, that was the ballpark number I remember. Yeah, so they're looking at about half that, and it's only a few years old. So, but that, I don't believe that was, um, I don't know who that appraisal came from. If that was Champlain Equipment, what they said they would give them, I don't know if they actually had an appraisal. Mm -hmm. Can we? So we're still paying on that, or we just bought it lump sum? You guys must have bought, bought it. it. We bought it. it. So I think that what we need to do is find. You know, I would say let's find the value on it. I mean, I mean, obviously, if it's if we can get fifteen thousand dollars for it, then we probably ought to sell it. But if we can only get six for it, maybe it's not or worth selling. You only get six for it, or you let you it know. sit there and rot for twenty years. So I'll take the six in my hand. Well, I but. think that what you're going to do is you're obviously we'll put it out with a minimum bid and or a minimum. But it's like any piece of equipment. You can buy something tomorrow for thirty thousand dollars, and as soon as you take it home and fire up one time, it's worth half that. I mean, it's just it's, it's just life. the way it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Local homeowner ain't gonna buy it more than long. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I think I if you a, if you put it out there, homeowner gonna buy it because it's too small. Yeah. If you put it out now, you could put it out and, you know, I mean, we're obviously going to advertise it for towns and, yeah. I don't know, maybe some mobile home parks or I mean, some. you can fish around and see if there's another mis municipality would mm -hmm. need something like that or. Yeah. Um, let's see what we can get out of it. 
The other thing was the um, the safe, that 1920s. I asked Mo, because Mo worked for Mosler for a long time, that ridiculous <coughs> thing and um, that needs to go. So I asked Mo about it, and he, he's, so first of all, I should say that it, you can't lock it, because one of these days someone's gonna lock it and you're never getting into it again. Um, so we don't. And um, Mo said that you can put, you know, if you jacked it up a little bit, you could get the doors off and they can take the doors off it. But obviously, it's huge. Apparently, when they did some remodel, they remodeled around it. So I did ask Dave Aldrigetti, I'm like, listen, how are we, how are you? How am I getting this thing out? So he said that basically we'd have to go straight through where the window is. So to get rid of it. So what I'm hoping to do is. Can I, which safe is this? It's, it's not the town clerk safe. It's that one that's in between the town clerk's office and the town manager's office. You ever noticed it? That huge thing. Oh, oh, the little walkway yeah. there. The that, freezeway or in the whatever. Hallway there. Yeah. Mo said that he thought someone might want it for a gun safe. I don't know. And then I just want it out. And so we could reuse so use that space for something else. But the suggestion was we get someone to just come in and Basically, um, I get an estimate what it's going to cost to take the window yeah, out, get, and put, get this thing out, and then out. have somebody come in and basically take it for that, or do we just give it away so that they, once we get it through the wall, they have to obviously take it with them and get it out. I don't know what to do with that thing. And um, do we need to have, do you, do you folks need to have a lockable safe no. for your, for the, no. Town office type stuff? The town clerk has a vault, so she has all the land records are in there, but no, we, just, we don't. And I don't know how they got it, or <laughs> I have no idea. I, Jean told me she had one, and she got rid of hers. And uh, she said they had to take something out to, I don't know if it was the door or what, but to get it out of there. I mean, I, I personally don't care, other than, you know, I wouldn't want to give something away for it to cost the town. Five thousand dollars to get it out of the no, building. No, I'm you know. hoping that um, whatever that so they'll. If it's reasonable, I have no issue with to get it out. whatever we do with it. I'm hoping that basically is they'll just pay to. A, obviously they've got to come and get the thing and get it out. But I don't want just any Tom, Dick, and Harry to take the wall apart and then put it back. I would rather have us control that. But yeah, hopefully, get, but I want to get a firm estimate and find out how much it's going to cost to open that up and get rid of it. But I have no idea how it got in there and I have no idea how to get it out. But it would be nice to get it out because it's huge. It's not really what we need. We could put zoning in there and you know, make the space a little more useful. But I asked Mo if it was worth any money. He said it'll make a couple hundred bucks. But, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things. So we'll see. Hmm. Would it be classified as an antique? I mean, it's 1920s. I asked. That's why I asked him all. I said, "Does it have any value?" He's like, "Eh." Not really. I don't know. He maybe buys. We got one last job for you, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to get the ship in that bottle. You know, right. now you're gonna be trying to get that safe out of the. Yeah, we may it may stay there forever. I don't know. They, they built that office around that safe. They did. He did say that they remodeled around it. I was like, oh, God's sake. Oh, yeah. you no, know, don't take it out when you have the opportunity when you're remodeling. They should have just got rid of it then. But. So anyway, so I will get uh, value from somebody on the Ventrax. And it sounds like you're okay with selling it because they're not using it. So it's just rotting. Yeah. If we can make it worth well, our while, I can't see why. Why not? Yeah. <clears throat> So can I just have a motion to authorize this sell? Such board needs to approve, authorize. Um, Make a motion sale. to authorize Therese to sell the Ventrac, Ventrac sidewalk plow. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> now, a question I should have asked before. Um, on the zero turn, the purchase, where is Steel thing like getting a battery and stuff with that? Yes, that was the plan, was to get a battery. Yeah. But it seems like with the sale of, if you could sell the Ventrax, then you could buy the, if you're going to buy a zero turn, but to Ryan's point, there's $10,000 more, prop eight to 10. 
bagger, and then we will have to buy a sweeper for the Kubota. So, what the sweeper is going to be for? Well, if we're well, if we're going to buy one, I mean, we've used the one we have used a sweeper attachment on the van tracks. Um, but it seems like maybe only the water park uses it, not the remote park. You know, the, the sweeper was also put down for light snow. It's still holding the power up to it. The sweeper, you just sweep the street, the sidewalk with that, do the same thing. It's still mm -hmm. got power. Yeah. I'm wondering if that is that another attack is why it would I'm not sure. I don't know what the thought process was behind buying the van track. So, um, but anyways, that's the deal. So just. Sitting there now, nobody's using it. We should, you know, right. we should get rid of it. Get something back. Get right? some of your money back. Um, All right. Any further on the van tracks or the safe? Okay. Good luck with the safe. <laughs> General fund budget. So this is like I said. This for uh, that, I think, um, we can have certainly have. Um, I didn't ask if the department had to come tonight because it was going to be at the tail end of the meeting, and that way, if you have questions, I could get answers and we could go back, and then we'll certainly add advice um, you know, the meetings like you do. So, as far as revenues, um, you know, that's a little bit more than they were last year but not anything significant. I ended up making some changes to town clerk fees. I know there was some question about that, about what we had budgeted and then what we got in. And, you know, town clerk fees are just dependent on sales, how many people come in and buy property or transactions that are recorded in the land records. So um, if you have any specific questions about the revenues, I can answer them. Otherwise, we can move on to the expenses. One of the expenses is public works. And I did try to, you know, as you can see, I put in notes along the, um, where it says 2021 notes. Talked about this. So the big things we should talk about in public works are the, um, the wages in here is I did not budget for, um, to replace the position that vacated after Doug Marshall retired. So my, theory is that we have Morgan who's you know does winter time obviously for the road crew and then this year we brought in a temporary like a seasonal person from December 1st until the middle of April and since that since I'm in this budget and putting things out contracting out uh, roadside mowing um, again ditching and some other things I think that the money that we're gonna allocate towards that, that they don't need another person. So I think that I wanna at least try this to see how it goes for the winter. With right now they have Alan, who took over Doug Marshall's route. Um, AJ does his route, Jason, Morgan, and then the gentleman we have right now is Dave Bergeron, um, who also works in the fire department, and he's coming in to fill in and he's doing part of Alan's route and as well as um, sidewalks. So sidewalks are actually open before the kids go to school now, so that's nice. And um, let's, see how, let's see how the winter goes. Because I feel that by outsourcing some of these things, it's gonna allow the road crew is gonna be able to focus on um, improving you know, class three roads. That's why when you look down further, you're gonna see that the gravel budget is so increased because they need to start building up some of the roads. But so <clears throat> that's one of the reasons that the salary has dropped, this line has dropped um, over 9% for public works personnel is because um, I'm thinking that we give this a go and try the seasonal and see how it works. So Therese, under hired services, um, I don't know, maybe I'm jumping ahead. Am I jumping ahead? Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. 17000 there, 
Jim Giberti. Yep. What's what? What is and that? Pipeline culvert. So no. the town of Bethel put in a dry hydrant at Jim Giberti's, and in somebody decided that when they were going to do that, that that existing pond had a 30-inch outlet and culvert that went under the road. And somehow, when the town got involved with doing this dry hydrant and installing it, they downsized that pipe to 15-inch. Obviously, his road's already been gone out once, and I'm not even sure the dry hydrant even works. Um, we're going to be testing that as well. It, it, it was a nightmare. It was a big overreach. The pond was dredged, and it, I don't even know how it got the way it did. But what ended up happening is, if that dry hydrant doesn't work, then the whole thing was a failure. But we're now on the hook to fix that property. So what the, we're going to up? I'm going to put take it back apart put back in a 30 inch, which is what should have been in there originally. We never should have downsized that and fix the, um, the release for the pond. Um, I have an agreement with Jim that he will pay for any material that we need. So when we tear apart the roads, obviously we're gonna pay for the culvert. I'm hoping we can salvage the one that we put in 15 inch and to upsize it, put it back to what it was originally. And, um, Short story is we, we went in there yeah. and did way more work than the town should have on private land. And yeah. now we have created a pickle yeah. and now we need to fix it. Yeah. So, so the, I put a number in so there. So we put money in there to hopefully resolve the situation and move forward. We're not doing work on private land. So, so. I have a um, contractor set to do the work um, that Jim, well, Jim and I agreed upon. and, and um, and if there's any, we'll have to pay for the culvert and the hours. But if there's any material needed in the road um, to put that back, that he is going to pay for that, he's going to pay for the seating and all that. But when was that put in the dry hydrant? Oh, uh, two years ago. A couple of years ago. Yeah, and it okay. was it's just a bad situation that yeah. <laughs> inherited that we're going to fix, and then we're going to stay out of that business. But that's why it's in there. I also, so I, I may have, I'm hoping I estimated high, but I need to put a number in there for the budget. So I'm gonna try to um, double check on that number and then um, maybe I can drop this number, but I have to put something in here to get the draft budget out. Um, culvert flush, I want to work with pipeline to get the rest of the culverts flush in Bethel that we didn't get this year, the town. Uh, can certainly dig them out, but we could just use them to come through and just get them flushed once yeah. and for all. That way we know that everything's open and and working. But, um, so if you go back up to higher services or equipment, you can see that I said that um, I want to put the roadside mowing back out. That took two guys a month last year with and borrowed a piece of equipment and it, it, it just didn't work. Well, so it would be nice to be able to just, when we had it, I was here and I think the first time, whoever did it, used to do it, I remember that we, we didn't have any complaints. People were very happy with the work and it got done. So I think we need to do that again. Well, um, I think there was scheduling issues. I know we were chasing them later in the year because you know, they, they're obviously they're mowing in other places too. Well, I think it's just going to be part of the big package. Yeah. I'm well, I mean, it was, you know, they could only make one pass. and then, Well, that wasn't even our... Yeah, one pass wasn't even... From another town, and that time... Efficient was enough to get the other one. Yeah. You know, that time was using when it needed to be used. Yeah. So we could put it back... We were trying to mow the wrong time of the year. I mean, it was just... Yeah. So you'll, you'll see in the higher... I've said for years, the town crew has a job, and all this other stuff we do, they're not... Keeping the roads up. So you'll see in the hired services that we uh, added money to put in there to put it back out to bid to do the roadside mowing. Um, and then some of the things that we haven't done forever that we need to start planning for and doing on a yearly schedule is things like ditching of roadway. Um, you know, we don't have proper equipment to go and 
you know, ditch roadway. So we've built in some money that we feel is about three weeks worth of a year that we can bid out some excavator work. You know, we can we can use our trucks. Right, and just note that that's not including stone lining. Right, no material lining. included, that's just machines. So we'll work. bid it out by the foot. But, it, it, you know, there's money in there, so if we want to go, you know, get miles for, for ditching, there's, there's a lot of areas on the low-lying, not just in the mountain areas, there's a lot of low-lying areas that need attention to ditching. Um, if we had to go into a, you know, on the side of a hill, then we could just cut the amount of time down the ditching and then put some material in there. So we've in, uh, built some money in for that. So the thought here is we're trying to tackle all, all of it. It's no, no, it's budget. just starting to... What we're budgeting. Yeah, I, I figured um, three weeks in there and, you know, I guess it all depends on who does the ditching. You know, that's why we're talking about probably bidding out by the foot so that the responsibility goes on to the... Um, <coughs> bidding rather than do it by the hour and you know one person can ditch this far or the other person can't ditch this far you know take deal. Um, and then there's some other things in there like tree cutting um, that's just for bigger trees because we've already spent there's some larger trees that naturally once a year that we have to cut down somewhere that hasn't been accounted in the budget in the past as well as there are some things that we haven't really been um, progressive on that we need to going forward um, get out there and have some money in the budget at least to, to One do of the things work. that came up, um, and I actually had not thought about it, and then it actually came up again today, was um, that I did not budget for it because I think we should be doing it in-house, which is patching, because we've spent quite a bit of money this year on black, the blacktop, the company blacktop. Paid them over fourteen thousand dollars, and we just paid today to have the spot fixed on Main Street. So. And you could have paid a a tenth of that if you had just bought the material, and I would have went. To, I volunteered my services many many times, but yet the water department and the highway department has not done it yet. Mm -hmm. Instead, they want to outsource it. So the next time we want to do fourteen thousand dollars of the patching, sign me up. I'll come down and do it. You give me the fourteen thousand, we'll move on. <laughs> and I'll, I'll you know, I'm sure I'll get some helpers that'll come help me and pay really well. Remember but the point is, huh? you know, remember come race time when we do. I mean, you and I went That's through this. That's three hundred dollars a pack right there. That's it. it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't we cost. We passed one up in, up in the, out of the town office. It's like three hundred bucks. We did it just to quiet the people up yeah. as a state. It's like. Yeah. It was a temporary fix, so obviously it ain't temporary now, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was supposed to be done in a couple weeks. And yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't think it'll be done this year. No. Hopefully it holds up. We didn't put a lot It's on the town. It's town responsibility, yeah. I don't know. State's not doing anything. Last I heard, it was still between the state and the contractor. That they no, they told they already office. wrote off on it. They're not oh. doing anything to do with it. It's the town, so. Okay, so. well, who's going to tell, like, no one tells the town. You yeah. know, last time I was told by the state that it was stuck between the two two parties and yeah. that the state hadn't signed off on the project, so I was stuck between the two, and yeah. no. what do you do? That's where I was stuck with, so. But anyways, so <clears throat> I did ask a road form a question about this because I was asked a while ago if the, one of the trucks had a tarp, and it does. So, so here's my question. We can buy additional mix, right, to keep it warm, to transport it from point A to point B. Don't matter. But, huh? Don't matter. That stuff stays so hot so long. If that, if that hole is ready by the time you pick it up in Lebanon and get it there, you don't even need a tarp. No. No. Because that's, I, I wasn't sure. What's, so tell me this, what is a hot box? It, it does, that's what we do a lot of our hand patching on. Just it, keeps it, it warm so you can do something for eight hours. So a day. when you go to Lebanon, they fill this box and then you yeah. can just take it there when you're doing stuff. You can drive around and patch holes all the time. I, are they ex expensive to purchase? Yes. There, there's no need for us to have. All we need to do. You don't need one. And I don't want to use the word lazy because but all we need to do is drive one of our trucks <laughs> down there, pay four or five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and get your patching material. Seventy two dollars a You know? It, it's, yeah. So there's, you know, so I'm saying there's no money in here for patching, which means that in the future that they're going to have to patch on their own because the only thing that I have in here is, I feel like there was a little bit of money, patching material. So $2,000 is in here for patching material. But honestly, this next year, we're cutting over Main Street. We will have dealt with half these issues. The only thing that 
we legitimately paid for was out of Camp Brook Road when we had, um, we paid for pipe to do a couple of sections that were bigger for pavement. It wasn't just patching. Um, but the two places that we patched were on Main Street. So obviously next year, that's going to take that up. But I don't know how much I mean, you're always going to have. Is $2,000 yeah, you're always, enough? Yeah, we have plenty. Plenty of money. I mean, you can go patch, you know, any way more than what the town needs in a year for two thousand yeah. dollars. It's well, a point of like it prioritizing our responsibilities because in this case we spent fourteen thousand dollars to go do these two patches. Right. What were we doing those days? Exactly. Right? Because we could have saved the town probably all the state we could have saved the town easily twelve, thirteen thousand yeah. dollars. So what was so important that we couldn't patch Exactly. Those days. So that's. It's been open a month, so there's a lot of days. Exactly. That we could have squeezed it in. Yeah. That you could have not. And, and the one right out here, it, it was just a parking spot, so you could have had it dug out forever and just had it combed off. And then when you get a day that you're okay, let's do it today. Just go down, spend. Um, you know, to do that piece probably would have been like, you know, four ton. Um, you know, two hundred eighty dollars and mm -hmm. trucked it up here and. Does. So you know. so that's the point of this is that <coughs> I didn't put any money in here. We didn't put any money in here for um for that for next year. We didn't have it like this year for for it. So with the outsourcing of ditching and outsourcing of the tree, it's going to leave more quote more time. So it, it will have to be done in house. It should very easily be done in house, and it shouldn't cost much money a year to. Patch hot mix. Yeah. yeah so, so going forward, that's going to be the deal. Is that it'll be done in house, so they're not going to be able to to outsource, you know, to, to outsource it. So the other interesting thing is we had this conversation, and um, the prior town manager and I have a different opinion about this. So where I come from, if the water department cut the pavement, the water department owned the whole. And, and right. while the road department may have to keep gravel on it, etc., because the water department didn't have the staff or the means to do that, when it came time to actually pay or have it repaired, it came out of the water. These patches out here are water related and they should be dealt with water related. However, they should not come to the town. Here's Yes, but the prior town manager said anything to do with the roads was the road department and not water. But you didn't budget money in water either, so I was kind of yeah. curious. It was two separate. Well, I believe if it's cut by the water sewer, water they sewer owns it. it. Yeah. That's the way I came Absolutely. from. But I'm not sure. That was not the yeah. prior manager's take on the situation. So we're going to address that in the budget round, too. I so mean, uh, the, the town's responsibility of patching things would be to you know, go patch potholes and Gilead, you right. know, piece. But if if there's a water main break or water break and they have to sock up the pavement, then that's the water department. Yeah, you know, it should go under their. That's why I feel that that was not what the marching orders were given prior. So I agree. But um, so anyway, so there's not money for that, so they're going to have to take it in house. But I was thinking that if even with but with outsourcing roadside mowing and ditching and. Those are things they were, there should be time for them to, you know, to deal with this, so. Um, then the other one was the salt budget. So that um, obviously, when I talked to Chris, he cut, the, he reduced the budget from 100,000 to 60,000. So we actually took the time and did the math. So we have 88 miles of road, which we do. If you remove the class four roads, because we're not maintaining those in the winter, then he return, re leaves you the 20, say 23 to 25 miles of pavement that we maintain. That then only leaves you 23 to 25, depending on which do you take, of you know, roads to sand. So, um, and this year there's a different um, you know, situation because the person maintaining Camp Brook last year is not maintaining Camp Brook this year. Um, so it's, and, um, so it's been trained out. And I do have Morgan keeping track of how much salt he's putting in the village, and I have the rest of the crew keeping track of how much salt they're putting on Camp Brook Road, too, so we can figure out what the, you know, the cost is. So, 
it seems so Kristen's thought was to reduce that to $60,000. Um, the chloride I reduced for a three year average. And then the gravel, obviously I increased because we have some roads that we saw that we didn't hit this time. We need to put some gravel on some of the roads to build it up when they're grading it. Um, and the sand budget, um, I put it that 45.8 is the three year average. So, and I had looked at, <clears throat> so I'm not sure what your thought is there. I took the calculation if you had, um, you know, I, I figured it on 60 miles worth of road and it's like 57 point something, whatever. But if you did, if you did the calculations of like say four days a week, you spread material during the winter time um, with the calculations of the rate that you should be putting it down at, then I came up with about a hundred thousand dollars in material that you should need that's assuming you spread material four days a week. Now, do you spread material four days a week? Probably not. So there should be some savings there. Um, so like last now, year- Would you just calculate a, a dollar amount per mile? Um, no, I, I just went into, uh, broke it down by the material amount mm -hmm. uh, based on those sheets that we had gotten. Oh, uh, yeah, in the Calculating your, yep. your sander and this, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, Last year we had, you know, between salt and sand, we had 135,000 budgeted. Now we know that we've been pretty wasteful, so the, we should see better than that. And then this year we've got, for this next budget, we have 105,000. So we basically have cut $31,000 out of the sand and salt, you know. I still think that the salt could be better than 60. I think, you know, I think we get 50 or under. Um, but it's, you know, we're, but, but at least we're taking a step in the right direction here with that, <clears throat> um, getting back to where we should be. How do you plan on an increase in the salt cost in your, in your math? Um, I just used, um, I added 10% from last year. Um, I mean, again, it just, it's more reason why we should be using more sand and less okay. salt, you know, um, you know, I, I think that we're looking at it and going by the salt usage. I mean, we were we were almost two and a half times. We used two and a half times more salt than we probably should have on the road. And I think you see that even if you reduce it by that amount, you're still going to get you're still going to get a um, comparable job, finished job that we've been getting. But things like you know spreading salt and then coming back down, plowing it off the road, or you know doing it the wrong times. Um, or putting on the wrong roads, you know, has cost us a lot of money. Of course, you know, if you're a truck driver and you have the option of taking sand or salt, you know, salt, throw it back, and it's a little easier for me to get things done. But, but we also came out of, you know, a really tough winter too. So, you know, that should be on the high end, or, you know. We got that problem last year. You drive around here, it was like wheelbarrow full of salt in places. I mean, just a pile. So. so hopefully we'll, uh, be but yeah, but if you look at if you look at budgets and going back on budgets, you know, uh, the budget we had back in 2017 was was a hundred thousand dollars for salt and I'm sorry, it was yeah, it was a hundred and three thousand dollars for salt slash sand. So we're kind of getting our budgeting back to that. Um, of course, in all those years, we you know we ran over. Um, you know, by ten or twenty thousand dollars a year, but I think some of that was just the, the management of the material itself, not the that we didn't have enough money in there. The other thing in this is under materials, it's guardrail. I added a line item for guardrail and put five thousand dollars in there. I haven't had a chance to call Brent yet at um, Lafayette to see, but there are some places where we need to do some guardrail work, so I wanted to have that called out separately. So that's in here. Um, and if you get down to the bottom, you'll see on the right, I made a note about bridges because it, it, we've been reading um, uh, the bridge inspection reports, but I think I was the only one reading them for the last year or two. So, um, so we made some notes in here about bridge 45, need some new posts and some painting. Some of this stuff that 
the town crew can do it. They can go in with power wash and paint some of this stuff. Um, watershed road, that's a that's a mess. And then um, the other one was some um, concrete overlays and painting and a cable rail upgrade. And some of that we can do. But you know, one of the things that people don't think about is one of the questions that FEMA asks you is, did you maintain this? Or did you maintain these culverts? Did you maintain this bridge? Well, all they have to do is print out the bridge inspection report, which they do do, and uh, they read them. And if they looked, if watershed goes out in the next flood, they are not going to pay us for that because we did not maintain it. So what we ended up doing was adding thirty-five thousand dollars for bridge material. So we're not getting a bridge for thirty-five grand. I get that. We're going to have to leverage maybe the thirty-five thousand on the structures grant. But then Chris was talking about maybe dead ending Watershed Road so that Watershed Road doesn't have an outlet on Camp Brook. Best maintained road in town. Well, <laughs> That's why it gets created all the time. Watershed Road doesn't okay. go anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a possibility. I mean, it, there's not a house right there on the end. And so. I think, again, what we're doing is we're moving. We're trying to establish some money. Well, I mean, it, we've added thirty-five thousand. We put it into the highway rehabilitation. rehabilitation, and it'll have its own, you know, side co coating towards bridges. But we haven't set aside any money to do any type of maintenance of any of our bridges. So all we do is we wait until they, you know, something drastically happens, and then yeah. we look for a structure grant, and then. You know, and then we spent all kinds of money like we did two years ago on, you know, a wing wall, you know. Um, so what Chris is, it, it is an interesting thought is to, if you don't, if you remove that bridge on Watershed and then it just doesn't outlet onto Camp Brook Road, I mean. Well, I think, I was just thinking out of the box, like what we did. there's no house there. It's like what we did on Route 12 when the bridge went out on Route 12. I was just thinking like, you know, the old Route 12 bridge when that went out, we didn't put a new bridge in there, we dead-ended it. Um, watershed Road, there's... People still have access on Watershed, I mean, yeah. too. So even if someone wanted to put a home back there, they, their frontage is still probably on Watershed. It's not on Camp Road, so they... But it's something to think about. But anyway, so it was just something that we had not addressed in the budget. And then, um, and then it was actually funny because I actually had a conversation with Ryan about it after when we'd set aside some money, but I had been reading them because of FEMA. That was one of the things with Pinello and everything else is, is looking at Line Bridge, uh, you know, it's why we had to pay for some of that gravel to come out from Line Bridge, the state, the FEMA's gonna pay for a majority of that as debris removal, but we had to pay for some because the prior bridge inspections told them that they should have been removing debris and they had, so we had, so we paid for more than our 12 and a half e rock on there. Is that bridge 39? Is that the one in East Bethel? It is. Yep. Star Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I go over that quite often sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the other thing I'm going to is where I put in is the ERAF. So the 118,000 will pay our ERAF. Our ERAF is our share of payment spend, which is 12.5%. So this will pay 12.5 percent on 863,000. Does not include Pinello, the permanent bridge on Pinello, nor does it include um, the Pevine slide over here, engineering or construction. Mm -hmm. But um, so I mean, you know, obviously we need to we need to take care of it. So it made sense. Can it be paid over time, or does it have to be paid in? One chunk of time. No, we need to pay it now. So you could take out a loan and pay it over time, but mm -hmm. I don't right. recommend it because why not take it out of the highway rehabilitation fund? Because that's where that money went mm -hmm. into the roads. And well, we're not really taking it out of the highway rehabilitation fund. Well, we're just not putting it in. I mean, I have we're just not. We're just not fully funding the highway right. rehabilitation fund, fund next year. Okay. And then we and we won't. Right. Next year, I mean, you just need to clean it up. Because the other thing, too, is we have next year, we're going to have to finish up those other projects. We'll probably have another $100,000 worth of ERAP that we're going to have to, mm -hmm. on, on the next you know, budget um, as well. So. And the thing is, too, by the next round, you know, one of the things that you get back, which we wouldn't normally account for, and I did not account for in this number, is 
like any of the work that the town does, obviously we get reimbursed for labor and uh, those things were coded here, but we'll get the FEMA establishes equipment rates. So there's some money that will come back on, that we'll get back from using the trucks and the grader, et cetera. And that amount will help, you know, offset our next round of draft. That's if FEMA pays us within two years. I was gonna say, how long does it take for FEMA to, oh. I mean, if, if Irene's any history. Mm -hmm. Well, Irene was, you know, extreme. This is, this, you know, we have finished the work and, um, I'd say you get everything done FEMA, in two years. I yeah. see FEMA every week, just it comes in and, and does paperwork and I've signed off on a bunch of projects and so hoping that the turnaround is, you know, is faster. Yeah, Irene was bold, different bird. So, um, all right, so I'm going to verify uh, the GBRD price. I'm going to try to see if I can get that down a little bit. And I need to call Brent um, to figure out the price for guardrail to see if I have the right number in there. The other um, thing to talk about, oh, oh, we haven't got to it. That's right. Um, under the parks, under the public works, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, under public works. So we have. We have a few things here for the cemetery. So our, our typical budget for the cemeteries is thirty thousand, um, which is basically mowing and yeah, um, <clears throat> but there's also um, there's two things that need to be done at the cemeteries. One is the one is the fence at Fairview, uh, which has been estimated at five thousand dollars, and then then estimated at ten thousand dollars for the wall at Cherry Hill that we've. Yeah, talked so about several times. That's a twenty thousand dollar project, but they said that we could do that over, like in two years. So it's ten grand a year. So, um, so one one thought, anyways, is um, one thought is we can we can you know increase the budget from thirty to forty five and take care of the cemetery issues. Um, or we could leave it at 30 and we could have those two as, as add-ons to the budget, um, which typically we, we do a few add-ons a year to get voted on separately. Um, so I don't know how the board feels about, because you know, 15,000 is almost one penny on the tax rate, so it's... Well, I'm just saying we've only started to get into it, but we're seeing a lot of additional, additional... We can get to the end, yeah, don't worry, Paul. <laughs> yeah, don't well, worry, Paul. It's going to come up. Breathe, breathe, it's okay. <laughs> we're going to get through this. And you've seen some of that. But you've also seen no, some No, we took it out of your check. It's, right. all, it's right. all set. It's all set. You've also seen some of it. Nothing from nothing equals nothing. You've also seen some of it. Right. You've also seen some of it. So you've increased my pay to $40,000, right? That's what it is. You've also seen some reductions in there, and there will be some more changes. Yeah, I'm sure. So I'm just going to go on record as saying I don't like the add-ons. I haven't liked it since I got Bethel because the residents have the right to look at any piece of the budget any time. But, you know, when you vote on it, you're voting on it as a whole anyway. So, um... The only problem with that is, devil's advocate I'm is, just saying, if I'm someone sure. stands up at town meeting day and says, I'm playing yeah. devil's advocate. Someone stands up and says, I don't want the fence or the wall, $15,000, cutting it out of the budget, 15000 right? Mm -hmm. And they, and let's say it goes through. Yeah. They, they can't tell us where to itemize exactly. that. Exactly. So we could chop 15 grand out of the budget, still do the wall and the, you know. That's right. Still do it and take it out of something else. Where if you vote on it, at least it's, there's an ownership there of the voters that the voters wanted, you know, to increase yeah. um, the funds for the cemetery. But you also and, could not do the work or, but I mean, I think that's part of the select work purview. Obviously they elect you because they feel that you're good stewards and you're gonna do what you so you're right. You, they cannot tell you where to cut the money right. from. But and, and that's and, and see the thing in the past is that has happened a few times where someone has stood up and it was I don't know five years ago someone stood up remember and they cut fifty four thousand dollars out of the budget thinking that they were going to get this this and that not cut it was one of my first year so the first thing I had to do when I came on the board was now we need to find fifty four thousand dollars out of the budget. What did they think they were cutting? All the ads. So they cut, they just arbitrarily cut 54000 out of the budget. Uh-huh. And then they, so they cut $54,000 out of the budget, and then they 
added all the ads. So we had to go into the budget oh, shop fifty-four thousand dollars. Because all the ads equal fifty-four thousand. Oh, I see. So it was like double dipped. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know typically we have, you know, anywhere between one and four of them a year that we vote on separately. So yeah. I, I mean, we could either just put it in there and add it, or we could. You could do it. Add it separately as and. As you will in the end. I'm just saying five percent. But the other thing under other public works is you'll see livery stable Avon storm drains. So. I budgeted $190,000 over five years to 3%. My hope is that we could borrow from our own revolving loan fund committee and then pay ourselves back, basically the town back the interest, and hopefully it wouldn't be as 3%. But so this was one of those situations where, for me, it was like, okay, if we're going to have this road cut open, do we deal with the storm drains at the same time? Because my concern was, what if we go back in a few years and then we cut into the new pavement and, you know, because then we look stupid. But in this case, it was two separate trenches because they have to be like five feet apart. I'm sure you can sleep the water line. But anyways, but you, um, but still. So that was Chris's question was, you know, are we going to pave the entire road or what? Because obviously this stuff washes down into the main, <clears throat> onto the main drag. And, and um, you have the pictures there. So I was just trying to figure out if, how to do it, if we were going to do it. And I don't, we don't have the money set aside anywhere to do it. So I was, so, this is my thought, but I, I don't know. I was going to ask, I forgot to, what did anybody give you, or do you have a number of, you just went fix the storm drains, and that's all we did? Um, well, the hundred and ninety thousand, we were given a budget of one hundred and eighty to two hundred thousand dollars to do it based on recent prices that I got from Wayne, from Aldrich and Elliot on some projects that they had done. Now he's obviously been busy with the water project, so he was just giving me a ballpark. So I went with him. So I was put one ninety in there. I, under, I understand that. But that 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 hundred ninety thousand does it if we work with the water. Line. Yeah. So if we are going to want to make some money, you may save some savings. You might get a little bit of money, you might save some savings. You don't have to put it in. Right, you're going to save on mobilization. mobilization. You got your truck, you're buying a lot more material. Yeah. I'd be surprised if it, it, it can't cost as much to do it in conjunction as it would to do it by itself. No, I'm, I'm sure there will be a some percentages here. It's a separate, you know, so the paving, I, the expensive guy mm -hmm. is saying price. <laughs> the expensive. I, I don't know. I think the I, issue we're going to have with that is not the point that I think we all agree that it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. But it, it'd be one thing if you were going to say, you know, $41,500 for one budget year, but you're going to have to commit to this for five budget cycles, which is, right. so you're, it's two pennies, two pennies on the tax rate for five years in a row. Right. That, that's the, I guess, the tough thing for me to swallow, because I know, you know, and go back to when Carl was on the board, you know, when we started to write this ship of the budget in town being a realistic budget, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, obviously we had cost issues that were happening that we weren't uh, efficient, but on the budget end of things, you know, we had committed to the voters that, you know, rather than, you know, do big spikes and valleys that we would try to bell curve this thing with a, a 3%, you know, take at this, um, you know, for a period of time until we can get, you know, operating in town what it costs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, the only thing with this right now is, you know, if we do the storm water, unless we cut other, where, uh, other places, if we do the storm water, then that, that puts us above that 3% that we have kind of talked about as a norm in town, you know, it would add, you know, two more percent to the budget. So, um, it's, it's a, something to think about. I can certainly get an email off to Mike Maynard and verify that the, you know, I mean, there, price tag will more. And, and Tim's right. I mean, it needs to be done. Um, the thing, the same thing is, is there's a lot of things in this town that need to be done and we can't write the ship in one or two years. It's going to take some time and yeah. maybe it won't be as efficient as we'd like it to be with paving or whatever it is, but. Right. It was a thought. I was appreciative that he was thinking of the big picture and saying, look, while we have this town torn open, Therese, we, we will 
look at what that's going to cause? And I said, yeah, you're right. We should look at it. Have they mm -hmm. scoped the drainage? Like, are the pipes gone, or is it just the structures? I don't know. He has, he has. You know, structure is a lot cheaper to change than the whole drainage. Right. You know, right. You know the, 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 what I thought was the water was getting to the drainage. Right. To the DIs. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So does that just need to be repaired he instead has, of changing all of it? We don't he, nobody I, knows. Nobody you know, know what they did? Down them or? They did. Right. Do, they did actually. So you know what? Let me find out because they were in a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, or no, maybe it was two weeks ago. And they did. They were scoping them. So let me. And I agree with Dave. It doesn't seem like hundred. He said the pipes had to be five feet apart. Well, an excavator bucket, they're going to dig a hole in the four feet. Yeah. So they're going to go over, they can put them both in one trench. Yeah. And yeah. bury, you know, I don't know, maybe that's too common sense, but. No, I mean. Well, you're pretty much going to tear that whole road up. Right. You're not, not going to make two separate trenches. Well, they're already digging just one hole. Well, they're just going to make it a little wider and put the other one in. And Tim had said that they could sleeve the water line, which is going to cut down on that. Right, but. How much, um, how much water does one take in the middle of the hill? Yeah, so let me I'm ask sure. him because they did scope them. Yeah. Um, so well, we find out. I imagine they're rotten. There's a metal pipe in the world. I was like, question is, can we, is there something we can do to make them more, you know, run if they're not plugged? <laughs> is there something we can do as far as directing the water down through there so we don't have to necessarily? Because, um, so basically, so is it the DI or is it the pipe? Um, so let me find out what the results were because I, maybe Tim knows, but I have not heard. So um, I can email Mike and find out. So that's a good question for next time to, to find out because I don't know. Um, so that's in there. So we'll look we'll at that thought process. Um, what else? So the backhoe and the international are paid off. So you can see where I just added that money that was coming out the loan payments back into the Highway Equipment Trust Fund. Yeah. And I did look, and that matches the schedule. So that's when you see it's paid off, it's just going back into the capital fund. Mm -hmm. um, fire department, I actually started processing their fire today, <coughs> so I'll have a better idea on that $25,000 number. Um, next, in two weeks, because I just, I'm doing it now, they get paid once a year. Um, Obviously, you can see that they want to update some radios. Um, I gave you some pricing there. Um, finishing the backside of the station, some materials, but that's something that you can certainly go over with the uh, fire chief. But um, I'll have a better number for payroll in the future. The constable department. Um, um, Therese, can you yeah. go back to the safety and equipment fund mm -hmm. for the fire department? Yeah. That's a one that we hadn't budgeted for in the past, or is that just the? It is. Um, it, it is. It's just that the loan payment. What are the payments? Their, their, their final loan payment got paid off, so I did the same thing for them that I did for the highway. Oh, uh, okay. So I see. You rolled it back right. over there. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All together, it's supposed to be like sixty grand or whatever. That yeah. Kind of gets allotted every year. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the constable. So obviously, I'm sure at this point you all have heard that um, Oscar took a full-time job working for the town of Royalton. It was in the newspaper, um, Royalton Minutes, starting December 1st. Um, he does not sure what his schedule there is going to be as far as days or nights. I told him that I want to know what the schedule is going to be so we can talk about it some more, um, whether he's going to be able to continue working for Bethel at 20 hours a week after he's doing 40 hours a week for them. Um, so. I guess that's to be determined. So in the meantime, I did speak to him about um, the cruiser. He said it needed some work, um, specifically that there was some issue with the suspension. And if I remember correctly, that's this year. And your capital plan is up to be replaced this year. Um, pretty sure. <clears throat> yeah. It'll be another year or two. Excuse me? That's so going to be another year or two. Yeah, we just started the fund last year. No. In here. Capital Cruiser, so in, in 2021, yeah, because you were only um, um, allowing $12,000. That was for the cruiser and the fit-up. So we were taking 
the appropriation from last year plus the appropriation for this year and assuming that hopefully you sell, you know, that the um, 2014 Ford Interceptor would be worth something. So it's actually in the budget for 2021 to, to price. so we'll see um, how it works out. But that, that's why the 32, um, 3200 is cruiser needs work. Oh, it's a front suspension issue. He has tires, so that's not an issue. That thing is so much newer than than the um, Tahoe. <laughs> so, <laughs> we just got a new one. I know. How long we had it? Uh, we we just got I think we. Well, we got one. Mark. When Mark came, they over bought a couple it. Years. We bought it used, used from another department. I think it was three two, years ago. I think. Two, yeah, maybe three years ago. Maybe three years. We bought it. We bought it from <coughs> county, maybe, or something. Something like that. Yeah. Sounds about right. So I don't know. I'm just saying yeah. that's what's in the schedule. So we'll see if it doesn't need. Um, because the other thing too is I had asked him because he told me it might need a water pump, and then my understanding, I said, does it have a timing chain or a timing belt? Because if it has a timing belt, don't you replace the water pump and the timing belt at the same time? Isn't that usually what the process is? So, anyways, he didn't know the answer, so he was. In but, um, so that's why that's in here. And then, so that's up a little bit. Um, we added a line item for uniforms. That wasn't in here in the past. I kept them at 20 hours a week um, because that's what the original, you know, thought was for 20 hours a week. So we'll have to see. Um, I'm not sure what, what's gonna happen now. Um, Mark had taken out the cell phone, <clears throat> and then Oscar has one in the internet, so we put that back in the budget. Um, so on in the on the rec department, okay. is the um, I see the wages are going up a little bit. Yep. But I, wasn't Dietrich? Wasn't she talking about having less? lifeguards there when she was in last she time? She is, and, um, but I will tell you in the past, um, when I did this budget, I was basically just given a number and not given any parameters. So this time I actually took how many weeks, how many head lifeguards, how many, you know, at the rates that they were going at, and plus um, she was gonna end up, you know, a couple that were coming back at higher salaries. So I actually figured this based on real salaries this time. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, and it's run pretty really close, so it may come in a little bit under, but. Yeah, I was just going back and looking, you know, he had, yeah. the year prior was 38,000, the year yeah. before that was 32,3. Well, remember she said whether she was gonna go a week longer or a week shorter. Mm -hmm. So I actually ran this on uh, out of amount of hours. Now I may have, um, because remember now she's saying that she might try to close early a couple days. So you're probably going to come in under that, but I was trying to budget instead of just being told to throw $40,000 in there, I actually wanted to base it on hours and wages. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, so the rec facility, I, the rumor mill is that and I will find out for sure next meeting because Ellie Griffin will be here. I heard, I've heard through the rumor mill that they want $15,000, 5,000 for trails and 10,000 for the skate park. But um, I had originally budgeted only $5,000, but Chris said that in the past you guys had some agreement with the rec committee that you would put 10. Yeah, the base. Is that a forever agreement or just like for X amount of years? The base amount was 10,000 based on the, um, based on the <laughs> recreation plan there. Was there a total cost on that thing originally? Mm, there was. Um, I don't know what it was, but, um, but we had started putting $10,000 in there. That was kind of the base allotted amount every year. Mm -hmm. And then out of the gate, then it like, you know, went to 20, and then I think one year went to 40 or it something. Yeah. Uh, and then last year we brought it back down to the normal $10,000 level. Yeah. Um, okay. So she'll come and make her pitch to you. I just put, yeah, I, so I put, I put five, but Chris said 10. So we put 10 <coughs> in there. Still don't have a real plan for the skate park. 
which they're coming back. Yeah, I, well, I spoke to her. We exchanged emails because she asked me, I said, you're supposed to tell me when you hear back from the contractor. You know, are you coming December 9th or, you know, it's like we're waiting for you yeah, to hear back our for number from the contractor. Time, yeah. So um, I think that. But that 10, that 10 in the budget there is, is to be put for the improvement fund, not for the skate park. So that's, that's to do, you know, the next pieces of, of the plan. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've already given the rec department the budget for the skate park, um, not to exceed, I think we had it in there, I don't remember what it was. No, it's, it's not really a skate park. So, um, so this 10 that we have in there would just be put in the rec improvement fund for the future projects that yeah. were part of the master plan. So you'll have to see what her, um, you know, her pitch is. Parks and public places are the, is the, basically the part of the conversation we were having earlier about the wages in here, Social Security, Medicare, Retirement, Health Insurance, that's all Morgan. And this round it's 27.5% because I actually, then once I knew what he actually had, was doing for mowing and I could put a wage to that, then I could figure out his actual percentage of time. So that's how I came up with those numbers. Um, you said he was mowing three and a half days a week. Three to three and a half days per week, yeah. Okay. So and they work four, remember? They work four tens. Yeah, so wouldn't that percentage be higher? Well, I have to look at his whole year because I have, you have to figure out how many weeks from April to this, oh. that is summer, and then how many, oh. yeah. Well, so during the winter? And, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, so okay. I have to do the, do the I have to so that's where you're at right there. Um, municipal office wages, you can see this has dropped um, because I hired Dietrich Feeney and today is her first day working in the office. So we're going to try to figure this out between, so she's going to work for me doing some of the bookkeeping and the grant writing and she only wants to work 30 hours a week. So. Uh, she started today, I started training her on how to do um, issues with water bills and sewer bills. So <clears throat> we'll see how it works for the summer. We're going to give it a go with this. So that actually reduces the position. So I have a full-time job, but it's dropped to 30 hours a week. Um, so, and uh, the tree does not require you know, benefits. So there's, that's why you see the savings in this budget here. But up above, I see, uh, to go back to park beautification, we got the money in there for the... Yep. Yep. The estimate for the yep. garden uh, stuff. Exactly. That's what that is. Yes. So, um, there's some building maintenance in here. I need to get some firmer numbers, but I had to throw a number in here. Um, I have just, I got some samples out of the, in the town office upstairs, some samples I have to mail to figure out if it's zone the light, then they have a fund where you can get like 50% of the cost to remediate it because I need to get that dealt with before I deal with the electrical upgrade. Um, so, because it's not 100 amp service in the building. So, um, I had budgeted, that's why the budget went from 3,500 to eight. So I'm gonna look again at the capital building plan, but I know we're looking at town Solved, so I'm trying to figure out what my costs are going to be, but I need to put a number in here for the, for the budget. Therese, did you say what you figured for uh, increases in uh, wages? 3%. 3%. And just a number I threw in here doesn't mean anybody's going to get it. It just means okay. I threw it in here to calculate the salaries. Yeah. Um, the only additional other line item in here is the <clears throat> account. And as of January 1st, they're going to process our payroll, which takes care of quarterly taxes, etc., which is going to be, I calculated, I did the math and figured out what it would cost us to process payroll versus them, and they were actually a little bit cheaper. Um, so I'm going to outsource payroll, which was another reason so that Petri could do, could pay her less, less hours and certainly saving more of the money in that than I'm going to outsource. So we still have to approve the warrant for the payroll, though? Yeah, but what happens now is it's here because they just have to fill in a spreadsheet that goes to them on Monday morning. They send us back the full packet with the journal entry. And so we'll figure out how the, that's going to work. And 
Worst case scenario, the select board will make a motion to authorize the town treasurer to pay rolling guys that prove it on a monthly basis or something, but we'll cross the bridge when we get to it. Um, town hall, I took the wages out of town hall because we're not paying anyone for, you know, if Kelly is here, or Pam is here, Dietrich is here, it's coming out of their own wages, so I, that's why there's a decrease in this budget as well. Um, also, there was some insurance cost that was a reduction. Um, I did increase the building repair a little bit, um, just because we need to have some, a uh, little bit of maintenance done in here, was, and uh, so I upped that a little bit. Um, but there's still an 8.86% decrease in this budget, just like there's a 9.5% decrease in municipal offices, which I may be able to reduce once I get some better costs on my um, maintenance of the town office. So the fire alarm system in here, it needs work? No, nope. um, we need to get some windows cleaned in here. I think we have some places in here that need a little bit of um, paint touch up and you know, you guys put a bunch of money into it. So I just- I think you've got sure. TASCO listed. And that's I just, that's what comes out of that budget is TASCO, for my okay. elevator, cleaning supplies, right. windows, okay. paint. So just kind of giving you an idea of what goes into that. Um, I don't see any increase in select board salary. No, I don't either. Uh, but I did want the budget for your FICA Medi, which has to come out of there anyway. So that's why it's an increase, but it's, it's just for FICA Medi. Um, blisters, we talked about this before. Um, I put $10,000 in here for assessor services. Um, because she, we don't know what we're gonna have here come election time, who's gonna be interested in being a listener and who's not. You know, worst case scenario, you end up with an assessor and you know, maybe, you know, Judy or somebody working in the office. But you know, I talked to Louise again about it and like I said, done some research, looked at other towns to see what they're doing, and everybody's kind of having the same problem we are is trying to find, you know, listers that you need good ones. So that's where we're at with that. Government operations, that's a decrease of less than 1%. That's town meeting, town reports. I put less money in town reports because we won't need as many. Um, <coughs> you know, not much changed in here, just some little. Well, the, the advertising number, is that? But it doesn't have anything to do with the town report, or does it? Advertising? Yeah. No, that has to do with your um, <clears throat> job advertising for highway, for town manager, for um, <clears throat> you know zoning planning meetings, that sort of stuff. So it's been forty-two, fifty, five thousand dollars, or whatever. Because we were looking for a town manager, and those were expensive ads, mm -hmm. and um, then we were looking for a highway person. Um, then we were looking for a bookkeeper. Actually, I only ran one ad and then one of the, but so that's why it was so pricey. In the past. But if the staff that you know right now, we, we won't be looking for anybody. You know, the staffing changes, but. So that's why in the past that's been so high. Appropriations, um, you know, local stuff. I just said I assume level funding when I can. Obviously, I'm waiting. Um, I had level funded human services, but um, we ended up adding another 2,350 just because you've been adding in the past. And I'm not sure any certain deals that you may or may not have with um, Stagecoach. Well, I noticed that in the for the human services side. It looks like we haven't paid out a lot of the ones that we were committed from. No, nope, I don't from, usually pay out. Last year. I pay them out usually in November. It's usually mine. Now we've got a couple tax collections under our belt, so okay. usually pay everybody out in November. So um, then I had a talk to Neil Fox the other day. He thinks the war the budget's going to drop by 2%, but I just got something in email today, and I haven't had a chance to open it yet, from Steve Webster, so I may have a better um, number 
or I will have a better number for this next time. Uh, Long-term debt is down about a percent. That's just because you're paying you know, more principal than interest. So, so <coughs> all in all, um, where we sit right now, I just got <coughs> a new bill from Nemric, uh, so they went up in their rate, so I have to adjust for that. But total expenditures, looking at this budget, are up 5.68 percent. And like I said, a big piece of that is that loan is the possibly doing the stormwater infrastructure. <coughs> but um, the amount to be raised by taxes would be 4.88. So I think once we go through it again and we get a couple questions answered and you guys, you know, mull over a couple things, you'll, you know, I mean that storm, that payment for the storm drains alone is is a big chunk of mm -hmm. money right there. Yeah. I see Chris running his calculator. So I know he's, he's wearing a hole for the he's table. He's going to have a percentage probably in a minute. So. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through a few things here. So if you take out that loan payment, what does it drop the... Well, if you take out, well, this is anyways what I was thinking anyways out loud, but if if you take out the storm drain piece and then I had taken 2,000 out of the fire department wages and 4,000 out of the rec wages and the 2,000 out of the White River Valley ambulance, mm -hmm. 2%. Yeah. So if you take those costs out, <clears throat> And don't change anything else here. Then that would be an increase of forty-eight thousand two hundred dollars over last year, which is two and a half cents. So, and I promised everybody was to What's keep the percentage? Things. Does that make your three point six percent? Yeah. So, and I kind of promised was to you know keep it at the mm -hmm. you know keep it in around three cents. Yep. So that would be you know half a cent under you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at it, <clears throat> we're also paying off $118,000 worth of debt. Yeah. Um, which if you look at it that way, if, if, you know, if, if this past spring didn't happen, then that would, you know, that's five cents that we gotta make up somehow. So, um, so if we didn't have the issues that we did have this spring, we could be sitting here with a budget that's, you know, a cent or two under last year's budget. But we do need to retire our debt, you know, um, and we're going to have more debt to come because we're going to have probably at least the same amount in the ERAP coming for next year on the projects that didn't get done this year that will be done next year. Um, yeah. So. I mean, that's a good thing, I mean, because, you know, let's face it, we just, you know, things we did last year was that swallowed that horrible $1.4 million pill to clean up that. So we, you know, I think it's great that we can retire now without paying interest, without going through that. It makes sense. It's more fiscally responsible to take care of it now. And the good thing is you've got two other things, you know, you've got two, three, three other things paid off. So, which is going to mean that money can go into the capital fund for savings. So you've also not even retiring, retiring that 118,000, you're retiring those two pieces of highway equipment and, and one fire apparatus. So that's a good thing. Well, what do we do with this, the uh, sewer, uh, the storm drain project then? Put it in that on? Let's just wait and see. Let me talk to, um, you know, what Brian said is, is good. Let me, ask them what they saw when they scoped it because they were here, I don't know, friends together, but in the last three weeks maybe, and I don't know what the outcome of that was. So he's right because are you doing the drop inlet or are you just doing the price? It's a matter. big difference. I mean, if we could do the job and only take a hit in one year, I mean, it's where yeah. right now, if we're gonna take a hit for four or five years, you know, two pennies for four or five years, I mean, and it's also going to be tough because don't forget you're also going to be looking down at the, you know, you have the the bond, the water, which I'm actually still very hopeful. I mean, it still is a great project and it still is a saving, you know, it's going to, that bond payment is going to hit the users. 
the water users. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I still believe that with galvanized, that we're still going to see a reduction in that four dollars that we had talked about. Um, but still, it's just you know how much, you know it only takes so much at a time. But I think that you know we fix some of the issues like what we're going to try to do in the town office is we can try to work a little bit more, you know, like by outsourcing the payroll and things just like by outsourcing ditching and some of those things. If we can take care of some of that, then we don't need this, you know, we don't need the other highway person. That's a good savings. And, you know, let's face it, everybody just needs to become I mean, way we more accountable for their time. And everybody needs to start pulling their weight and doing the jobs they're hired to do. And, and I think that it's kind of like last year. I mean, last year we had the budget, if I remember right, last year, the proposed budget really was about 1%. Yeah, it was. Just over 1%, but we, we took the other 2% to put away for rainy, you know, putting into our funds to yeah. start futuristic. I mean, if we wanted to, I mean, if we wanted to be the old administration, we could come in here and chop out a bunch of stuff and probably give everybody a one or two penny decrease next year. Yeah. But the thing is, is we're not gonna be looking out for, you know, some of these things that um, will come back to haunt us for, you know, it costs three times more money to do once they're um, broken, but. Yeah. So no, I mean, I, so, I mean, I think for a first stab at it, um, you know, I don't think, it, you know, that's not bad. So we'll have people come in next week, make sure that Alan is here for, um, Road department, the fire chief is here. Case there's specific questions about their budgets, and I mean I think it's good to you know make sure the departments obviously are going to ask some questions that are lingering. So. But unfortunately, I mean the whole thing with the you know the spring flooding really is what you know killed everything for us. Well, I mean we would have been not. well we would have been able to we would have been able to keep funding our our funds right and you know we probably could have been funding we could have been we could have level funded our funds mm -hmm. and our budget and, and yeah. given money back to the taxpayers but you know we lost five cents on the flood yeah I mean, so so if tax you know if, if this proposal right now if we do do a few of those cuts that we were talking about mm -hmm. We end up at two and a half cents. I mean, that really could have been a minus two and a half, you know, if the flood didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And we could have funded everything the same. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. True. Sorry, I will um, look into a couple things on my end and make sure that Alan. Yeah. Um, Want you to tell me this report? Sure. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I am still going to be starting an equipment committee because we're still going to have some issues. So I'm going to be asking people like Brian and Jeff Dillman and a few other people to, you know, that way when, before the town makes purchases, they're going through a committee that knows equipment and understands the processes before it comes to the select board so the select board can. Um, <coughs> then I'll look at um, having a select board member be the liaison to that committee, I think Mo might have been interested before. Um, like I said, I'm working on the highway access policy. Um, just so you know, we're, the tenant office is closed Thursday and Friday this week. If somebody's off on Friday, they have to take it as a vacation day. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I'll probably be working, but the office itself will be closed. Um, P Vine, part of the deal for P Vine going out. Um, Having that slide replacement, part of that RFP was for Dubois and King to provide us with a road closure policy. Like right now, if someone goes off, it's straight down. So part of that was for Dubois and King to do a traffic study so that they have to file, follow all the NHTC standards and have that. We have we're going to close a portion of Pivine right there where that slide is because if somebody goes off, there's nothing there. They're going right down over. So. I should be getting that plan this week, and then Alan will have to, we'll get whatever we need, for, you know, signage and et cetera to put in there, and, and that will also be covered by the ERAP. But 
I was given a tip from Chris Baum that there's a town that bought a whole bunch of Jersey Bears and maybe he's not going to need them now, so I might be able to buy some from somebody else. Oh, we'll see. Um, Kelly started working on town court, so that's underway. Um, I did go to the um, DRB meeting the other night, and they did okay the downlighting for the skate park. Ice, not skate park, skating, Frank, excuse me. So they did approve that. Uh, female, like I said, is ongoing. Uh, Chris and I still have a little piece that we need to finish, um, but Jessica comes every week, so we're you know, just going through the process, getting all the paperwork in and getting all that done. I'm still trying to find a contact for the railroad. Do you know who to contact? I should have asked you. I ran into somebody who ended up being in Canada. For the railroad, um, we have want to take <coughs> the graffiti off the bridge, and the select board was thinking that I needed to talk to the local, you know. So you got time now. Yeah. We're not going to paint it now. Oh, no, I wait until spring. Yeah. <laughs> the only contact I had was a milling person in Canada, and so I emailed them, and they emailed me back, but they haven't been able to give me anybody yet. Um, so I'm going to. Go to BRI meeting the next one in December. I talked to Lindsay about that. And um, we are going to be updating the signage on Camp Book Road. Um, again, thank you to Ryan. He came in and had some questions about what we were going to do with Camp Book Road. Getting calls in the night, and we have had, you know, we had somebody up there the other day with a sports car and high performance tires and trying to get him off the hill. And, so we chat about that, so that was very helpful. Um, Nortrax is coming tomorrow to do some work on Raider, and I had worked with AJ and asked him, you know, all the guys there, have him give us a price on that. So that's going to be a big deal for whether or not we do Raider this year. Or the next budget cycle was figuring out <clears throat> what's wrong with the Raider. And you know what are the issues with it? How much is it going to cost to do something to it? And and try to so that we can actually have that'll be the first thing on so that the equipment committee will tackle is to we'll know what's wrong with the existing grader and figure out what we're going to do next for a piece of equipment. So um, that was it. Yeah. So um, I'll let you know. So once we find that out, that could be obviously helpful information. I told Amy out of that was something in writing so that we have some idea what, if anything at all, is wrong with it and how many hours it has on it and what, you know, what could be the future of that piece of equipment. So I'm hoping that it has some pleasure hours on it that weren't work hours, so maybe we could push that purchase down the road. But I need some information. Okay, so that is it. Questions on the town manager report? And we had select board meeting minutes from the 12th. And like Kelly, like I said, she'd updated the book for you. I had <coughs> done it since she left. I'm sure she was out. So she. So on the last paragraph of the last page right, right here. Of, the, of the report, it uh, says a motion made by Brigham to enter executive session. That paragraph. The board excited executive session. Uh, 8.36. Oh, I was really excited. I was excited. Yeah. 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 I was excited to go home before 9 o'clock. <laughs> All right. I'll you know, we were excited. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay, good. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody else? I'd entertain a motion to amend the meeting minutes or approve the, approve the meeting minutes as amended. No move. Okay, all in oh. favor? Okay. Okay, I completely missed that. Who was the motion? You were. Who's the second? Who is second? Okay. <clears throat> and don't forget, this is a new packet, so if you want to go, you need to RSVP. 
home. So you know. Are these just all the old ones that we need to sign? Yeah. As you were saying, you had enough to do. And the constable had some. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand his report. Um, I, I I asked Kelly to print something out and put it in the back. Of it. You know, the start time nine forty-five, end time three thirteen fifty-eight. Total hours one. You know. Yeah. The next one is twelve hours actually, and he's got point two five. No, if I, I hurry up, bam. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Um, does it make any sense? I don't know. He's, I thought he was going to give you something else. He was. He was I just talked to him about doing something different, and then it just not uh, happened. Well, I'll speak to him again. He's going to be in tomorrow. Um, tell him that he seems to fix his recording. I'll just tell him a lot better recording. Well, it doesn't seem like it's calculating properly. No, I mean, it's just the report doesn't do anything. It doesn't make any All right. sense. I'll, um, I'll circle one of those and do it and tell them what okay. But in the end, that wasn't what you described to you guys anyway. It's for your no. uh, love. No. So, any other business to come before the board? Uh, yeah, just a quick revisit of the December meeting dates. Yep. So, the second meeting in December, we had talked about it being on the 23rd. Yeah, is that, um, the, is that the fourth? It's the fourth. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm going to definitely be out of town. I can call in, but I just wanted to check in if anyone else had a conflict. Um, if we wanted to move it, if not, I'll just, I'm going to call in and. I don't know how they do that. I'm not sure. You don't have to do that. You're on holiday. Yeah, I might not be in town either. So I guess not. <laughs> this, this is why I was thinking if I, if I was having a conflict, that might be yeah. to have a conflict. Because we Christmas, to Christmas is on it's a Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so do you want to do it the week prior? I'm going to be heading out on Monday. I'd be trying to do the week prior. What is that? It's the 16th. 18th. 18th? Yeah, it's the 18th. Oh, no, that's the 16th. 23rd, 7th. So do you want to do the 9th and the 16th? Fine with that other job. Yeah, mine looks good right now, but I haven't gotten my basketball schedule, so that could blow everything up, but we'll just uh, we'll go with that as it comes. Does that work for you, Dave? Oh, yeah, I'm leaving right after Christmas. I don't know, I'm, I got 23, everything works for me up to Christmas Day. Okay. And I can do the 23rd or the 16th, so. Well, let me firm up my plan and see. So you want me to just put this on the agenda for next time? Okay. We'll talk to the boss. And I'll see what, yeah, then we'll know about Mo too. And then will you have your basketball schedule by next week, Chris? Um, the games I haven't gotten yet, no. But will you by next, by December 9th, will you? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 9th is our next week. All right, so I'll put 16th or 23rd, question mark. And we'll, um, we'll decide on the 9th.